tremendous advantage. Washington State also has that extra juice. They haven't been in a bowl game in 51 years. They ought to be ready. These are the players we will see at the so-called skilled positions as the starters for Brigham Young University who will be receiving the kickoff. Kevin Morris will kick off for Washington State. One thing I know, Lee, we've got to absolutely convince each other not to use the word Cougars. <laughs> We're in trouble. The Cougars versus the Cougars. There's the offensive line of Brigham Young, the expected starters. And obviously, that offensive line has done a great job, not only in pass protection for Jim McMahon, but also for the run. The deep man for BYU. Bruce Hansen, number 34, will be deep. By Sikahima will be back. Morris to kick off wherever you are along our Mizzou Television Network. We bid you welcome from the fourth annual Holiday Bowl, San Diego, California's Jack Murphy Stadium. And here it is. Good kick by Morris. This is Hansen at the two. Good coverage. Excellent coverage by Washington State. And Jim McMahon and company will take over from the BYU 15-yard line. Joe Taylor was the first of the Washington State players to get downfield. Jim McMahon, number nine. This is the Washington State defensive group. Collins, Elisara, Mike Walker. Mike Walker, captain. Emil, Elkinton, White, Blakeney the secondary two receivers split to the left a slot back to the left and first down a running play Wayman Hamilton number 33 a sophomore Scott Pettis number 29 was the back that was in the slot Hamilton carried on first down Gain of three, second down, seven, BYU. Colley, number three. Scott Colley is out wide to the left. Dan Plater is out wide to the left. Pettis is in the slot left. Hamilton is the lone setback. This is Pettis in motion. A screen to Colley. Fumble. First break of the game, Lee, definitely belongs to BYU as BYU's number 58, Vince Stroke, one of their offensive linemen, winds up with the football. They come up, here's UC who tries to sweep to the right, throws a quick screen, which is designed to be a running play, and he strips the ball loose. Number 58 picks it up here, right, and makes a great run. Watch, this is a thrill of a lifetime for that guy. <laughs> He'll probably talk about that forever. It'll be a 50-yard game by the time he finishes talking about it. First down, BYU on the recovered fumble at the BYU 27-yard line. The tight end, Hudson, is to the right. Now, he's McMahon's favorite target, Gordon Hudson, number 95. But he's looking left. Was it a catch? No. It was not a catch, say the officials, by Scott Pettis, the junior out of Stockton, California. But whatever BYU did there, Lee, uh -huh. he was really open. Well, I'll tell you what, he came behind the linebacker, and the quarterback obviously sent somebody deep to clear and brought the, the back behind the linebacker wide open. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he came back with that play pretty soon. Result of the incomplete pass, second down 10, BYU, BYU 26-yard line. Plater is out wide to the right. Colley is out wide to the right. Now, this time, the tight end Hudson is over on the left side. No score, just underway from San Diego. Good protection. Short again. And a pretty good rush that time. This is your opportunity to vote for your favorite player, most valuable player. Jim McMahon, Herschel Walker, Bob Crable, or Marcus Allen will be consistently giving you those special phone numbers for each player. BYU third down 10, BYU 26 yard line. Receiver set out either side. Split backs. Good protection. Not a first down. Gain of about four. BYU forced into a punting situation. Mike Smith. Mike. 
Yes, Ray. We're down to you. All right, we have a quick look now at the telephonic survey. Fans picking their favorite player right now, Jim McMahon, BYU, leading the way with about 35% of the vote. Herschel Walker, Georgia, about 30% of the vote. Marcus Allen, uh, third. And Bob Crable, a distant fourth again. For Jim McMahon, 900 720 3530 is the number. For Bob Crable, 900 720 3532. Marcus Mies. Allen, 900 720 3533. Herschel Walker, 900 720 3531. Mike Mees, the punter. Dribble returned it. Good return. Result Washington State has good field position. We'll return to the Holiday Bowl after these words from our local stations. Williams picks up about three yards. This is the starting lineup for Washington State. You will see Casper at quarterback. You will also see number 12, Ricky Turner at quarterback. Those are the, the interior linemen, Flager, McKay, Sebahar, Patrick, and Sloan. Now, play selection was brought in by Cameron Mitchell, a wide receiver to the left, on second and seven for Washington State. The overshot Mitchell. Actually, BYU Lee reacted pretty well. They had double coverage on that. Right. They, had both, they tried to throw the ball to the split in on a quick out, but they couldn't get it to him, so he went to his secondary receiver, and obviously he couldn't see him right there. See, he pumps, and then it's all over. Once you make a quarterback hesitate like that, it's very difficult to throw the ball straight. As a result of the incomplete pass, third and seven, 42-yard line. 42-yard line of Washington State, two wide receivers, one to either side. Casper, he has a man deep. He rolled the closest man to it with the BYU defender. That was cornerback Tom Bomo, who was nearest the football. So, yeah. You watch the quarterback is pressured here by 93, and he throws the ball a long way. The guy makes a great effort here to try to intercept the football, but it's just over his hands. A nice effort by the defense. A nice effort by the defensive secondary man. Now. The result: punt formation time. Tim Davy to punt. Excellent coverage by Washington State at the BYU 28-yard line. Sikahima carries back the punt just a couple of yards as a result of very good coverage. So in this scoreless game, with 12.35 left to play in the first quarter, BYU goes on the attack. Now on the kickoff, it started the game. BYU started their first series from their own 15. Now they're up at their own 28-yard line. So a pick up 13 yards on the punt exchange. Wide receiver set out to the left and right of quarterback Jim McMahon. Offside. noted the offside against Washington State so as a result it's going to be first down and five well what happened in that situation they double covered they split in and he had to try to throw the ball into a certain spot and he just overthrew it I think uh, McMahon doesn't look as confident as I've seen him in the films before maybe the, the defensive secondary changing their coverages is causing them a slight problem Holly and Plater are both out wide to the right on first and five. There are the wide receivers. First and five. This is Pettis, the tailback. And a first down out past the football. Scott Pettis, who ran extremely well during the regular season. The leading runner for BYU, averaging over five yards a carry. First down, BYU at the BYU 41-yard line. Slater is out to the left. Neil Ballholm is a wide receiver now, number 89, just came in the game. Pass incomplete, trying to hit the junior from Vancouver, Washington, Neil Ballholm. 
Tonight, a unique opportunity for you to vote for your choice as the most valuable player. Ordinarily, you know, the voting is by writers and broadcasters. You can vote for Jim McMahon or Herschel Walker or Bob Crable or Marcus Allen with those phone numbers, a different number for each player, the same area code. BYU, second down 10 at the Brigham Young 41-yard line. No score. 12 minutes left to play, first quarter. That's the fullback. Hamilton in motion. And again is off target. He's been able to complete but one pass so far. Tried to hit Scott Pettiser, number 29, his tailback. And the BYU player is getting up ever so slowly. Calvin Close, the senior guard from Camarillo, California. Joe Taylor, number three, has checked into the secondary, a junior, junior strong safety out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Third and ten, Brigham Young, 41-yard line. Hamilton was in motion. Big rush. Screen. This is Pettis. And Washington State reacted very well, limited that to a gain of just four, and it's fourth down as McMahon completes just his second pass of the game. I can, this, the screen play here is definitely what McMahon's got to do. He's got to get his confidence a little bit. Throws a little screen, but watch the great reaction of the defensive linebacker area. They block. Here they come. Great reaction. Limits the play to a very short game. Good play, Washington State. Bill Gribble. There's Bill Gribble back at the 10-yard line of Washington State. The BYU Mike Mees, who averages just about 41 yards per punt. At the 18 of Washington State, 20, 25, about the 26 yard So from the Holiday Bowl, there is no score. And we'll return after these words from our local station. From the sidelines, BYU trying to get their offense straightened out. Meanwhile, Washington State, first and 10. Washington State, 27-yard line. Casper, the quarterback. And here comes Tim Harris. Excellent defensive play. Dave McKee, the senior cornerback out of Holden, Utah, limits that to about a three-yard gain. Good defensive play. Mike Smith, what's that uh, telephone poll showing so far? Yeah, right now, Herschel Walker has taken over the lead with about 35% of the vote, followed by Jim McMahon with about 32. Marcus Allen, the close third with uh, Bob Crable, a uh, distant fourth. Again, 50 cent Valley charge for a local call. You can't use a pay phone, and you can't use operator assist. Within an eyelash, that was Cameron Mitchell. The coverage by Dave McKee, but I'll tell you something. Casper tell you came what, within an eyelash, huh? No question. He runs a little out pattern, and then he just tries to outrun him. Mitchell's got great speed, and he extends himself out. Got great eye concentration. Just can't quite reach it. Good effort by Mitchell. Result of the incomplete pass, third down seven, Washington State, 30-yard line. First quarter, no score. Deep drop back by Casper. There's a guy open. Yes, he has him down there. Oh, oh. goodness, that was Tim Harris, the junior tailback out of Compton, California. So I'll tell you, there's something I'm going to put in the back of my mind. This Casper can throw deep with accuracy. Meanwhile, Washington State's Tim Harris on that great, great, on that great effort shaken up along the sidelines but meanwhile it's punt formation time Washington State's Tim Davey is back to punt but not before yeah we do have a break here in the Holiday Bowl there is no score in the first quarter and we'll return after these messages a separate lead to gather in that pass right You'll see what happens here. The Washington State sends a man short, and then they bring the guy out of the backfield. Harris, he was wide open there for a moment, outrunning everybody, makes a great effort, falls right back here on his tailbone. And, brother, let me tell you, so that hurt. And also, if you noticed his head, 
That's one thing that always scares a football coach, and that's when they're looking at his neck. He's okay, though, and thank goodness for that, because you always worry about a kid when he hits his head on the turf. But he's going to be all right. So before this capacity crowd at Jack Murphy Stadium, incidentally, coming up, Paul Bear Bryant, number 315 on many of these same stations in the middle of January, and the host will be Joe Namath. The punter is Tim Davy. To receive it is by Sikahima. Standing at the BYU 30-yard line. 10-15 left to play first quarter. No score. Davies last punt. Davies last punt just 34 yards. Sikahima at the BYU 31. There will be recorded an eight-yard return, but what moves? by Sikahima 39 yard punt about a 12 yard return no question uh, you'll watch one thing watch the great effort in this kid he's got very very quick feet as he makes a move here he eliminates two guys picks up blockers notice one thing everybody on the on the Brigham Young team is blocking high that's one of the new rules in college football and very good and on this play you won't believe it but back the kicker got hit and the kicker is down so and there's the kicker a second Washington State player shaken up just a little bit earlier it was their tailback Tim Harris who had made a valiant effort to grab in what turned out to be a third down incomplete pass now Tim Davey now apparently he was blocked in the course of coming up to try and help out defensively correct when the uh, when the man started to make that break he was his secondary or a safety man he came up in good position and some BYU guy flattened with a, with a perfectly legal block. And I'll tell you what, you missed that Harris and this kid. This could be dangerous. Tomorrow, 1 o'clock Pacific, Pacific time, Toledo and San Jose State in the California Bowl. Meanwhile, as we look along the sidelines of BYU, it looks like it's his left leg, doesn't it? Yes, they were examining his left knee, Tim Davey, their punter. He's done an excellent job. He's averaged about 41 yards per punt. So first down, BYU at the Brigham Young 39-yard line. First quarter still has about 10 minutes remaining. Wide to the right is Bauholm. To the left is Plater. The fullback is Hamilton. The tailback is Pettis behind McMahon. This is Pettis. Oh, left-handed thrower. And he has his... That looked like his big tight end, Gordon Hudson. They had the two quarterbacks in the game. I didn't see that second quarterback go in there, Steve Young. Did you? No, I, I didn't see him. And then he comes, and he's a left-handed yeah. quarterback too. And he threw it the opposite hand. This is my favorite player right there. This guy could be the difference in the two ball clubs. Hudson. Hudson, great football player. Won the Utah game, in my opinion, for the uh, for BYU team. So with two quarterbacks in the game, BYU comes up with a first down at the Washington State 35-yard line. To the end zone. Touchdown. With his first deep pass completion of the game, and BYU is on the board. There's Mac. There's a quarterback. Now watch, watch him pump, and he throws the ball to Plater, who's beating him one-on-one -on -one man for man coverage. This is typical of BYU. Nothing happens for three or four series, and then bing, bang, two plays, touchdown. Watch them. They're dangerous. They can do this the entire ball game. I know. <laughs> they did it to me. All right, Kurt Gunther to try for the extra point. BYU is on the board first with 9.46 left to play in the first quarter. Brigham Young grabs the lead 7 to nothing. We'll return to the fourth annual Holiday Bowl after this message. Jim McMahon 
And the man who caught the pass, Dan Plater, and for Plater during the regular oh. season, he had grabbed off five touchdown passes. Here it is again. Great pass protection. He pumps to get the one-on-one -on -one coverage, and it's all over. Anytime you cover these receivers one-on-one, -on -one, it's all over. They took a calculated risk, and it failed. For McMahon, 30 touchdown passes during the regular season, so this would be number 31. Don LeBaum, you saw an instant ago, number 21. He is just a freshman. And he is at the Washington State four. 30. Great run back to the 36-yard line of Washington State by Don LeBaum. L-A-B-O-M-M-E. Where Tom Homo, a defensive back, for BYU made the tackle. All right. Washington State, on their first several possessions, had Cleet Casper at quarterback. Al Bowens, number 20. Robert Williams, number 42, are the running backs. Penalty flag down. We might have had a defensive holding penalty. Nope, it was offense. Mike Smith, what's going on in the voting? Herschel Walker leading the way with about 38% of the vote. Jim McMahon second, about 33%, followed by Marcus Allen and Bob Crable. Quickly, Jim McMahon, the number is 907203530. Marcus Allen, 907203533. Bob Crable, 907203532. Herschel Walker, 907203531. Penalty against Washington State. And there you can see, in case you'd like to make a note, of the numbers for each of the four players. Your opportunity to vote for most valuable player. Meanwhile, referee Jack Gatto indicates holding against Washington State. The ball back to the Washington State 28-yard line, where it will be first and about 19. Mitchell to the right. Escalera to the right. Casper. Oh, did he have his man open. He had number 88, Jay Keller. Senior out of Baldwin Park, California, was certainly wide open. Dave McKee, the nearest defender, but Jim Walden looking on from along the sidelines. And the last time Washington State had the football, he saw his quarterback Cleet Casper come within an eyelash on back-to-back -back passes of hitting deep receivers, but unable to. And right now, after the incomplete pass, second down and 19, Washington State, Washington State 28-yard line, BYU leading 7 to nothing. Ooh, a big hit on wide receiver T.J. Jones. See the quarterback come back there and throw that quick out to Jones. He's got excellent speed, excellent speed, but watch the linebacker come in and make a nice, hard, aggressive tackle. Good conversion. Kyle Whittingham with that great defensive play for BYU. His dad would be proud of him, won't he? Oh, I'll say. There he is, number 59. For Washington State, third and 14 at the Washington State 33-yard line. First quarter, BYU leading 7 to nothing. Here comes a blitz. Casper unable to hit, but a penalty flag down. The intended receiver was the tight end, Pat Beach. The penalty flag was down in the area of where Beach was, along with defenders. Let's see what we have. Brigham Young, pass interference. Here's an update on the injuries. Tim Harris, the running back, wide receiver on that play, knocked out, availability not known. Here's that last Here's, infraction. He makes that good fake, and he tries it, and you see the blitz coming from the outside. He avoids it. And this is what He's not very famous for this, but he does a great job, and there's, there's the man all over him. He cannot touch the man when the ball is in the air. First down. At the Washington State, that's Bowens who just came into the game a moment ago carrying for about two yards to the Washington State 48-yard line. Al Bowens, the ball carrier. Filiaga making the tackle, the defensive tackle. Senior from Hawaii. 
gain of a yard. Second down nine. Washington State 48 yard line. 8.20 to play first quarter. BYU leading 7 to nothing on a touchdown pass from McMahon to Plater. No. The officials say no interception by Steve Brady. They say that it hit the turf first. Well, here's one of those quick option, quick plays that gets hit. Now, everybody in the ball car can see this better than the guy that's standing six feet from it. But, uh, you know, it's a bad angle there. But I tell you what, that looked like he almost caught that ball. Third down, nine. Casper has been able to complete only one pass, and that out of seven, that was for five yards. There's on the sidelines. Casper. And Robert Williams, the Compton, California junior, has a first down at the BYU 40-yard line. This is this is pretty much the bread and butter part of their offense, right. isn't it? The option offense with when Casper's in there. No question. Here they do the reverse action. The option comes down, he pitches the ball, he reads number at 93, he pitches it out. Quarter, it makes a great play here. I tell you what. In my opinion, they're going to have to go to more of this. It looks like they've been trying to throw the ball so deep they haven't been able to establish anything. That's a good play by the Washington State team. Escalera and Keller out wide to the right. First down. Brigham Young 40-yard line for Washington State. Midway first quarter. Deep drop back. This is screen. Penalty flag is down on a fine run by Al Bowens, a junior out of Boise, Idaho. But a penalty flag is down at the 47-yard line of BYU. I think you might find Flippy. a clip there, yep. right? You're right. You're right, Lee. And now watch the quarterback drops back deep. That's a key. That's a screen. Now watch as he pitches, the, flips the ball out. You'll see a man right here get blocked from behind. Right there. That's clipping. You cannot touch a man from behind. That's a 15-yard penalty. Clipping. Very, very dangerous play. So referee Jack Gatto of the Pacific Coast Athletic Association, all officials of tonight's game are from the PCAA, saw a costly penalty against Washington State, trailing 7 to nothing here in the first quarter, which has 7.44 remaining. All the way back to the Washington State 38-yard line. The reason why that's a 15-yard penalty and probably one of the most severe is that it's a dangerous play. Most of the rules are put in for the safety of the football players. It's now first and 32 as we look at Jim Walden along the sidelines, the head coach of Washington State. Way, way overthrown by about 10 yards intended for T.J. Jones. So far, uh, Casper has not been that accurate, but he certainly has shown us that he has a strong enough arm. Some changes in the backfield. The freshman, Don LeBaum, number 21, is coming in tomorrow night. Rather, tomorrow at Southern Mississippi and Missouri. Incidentally, ignore that time that we showed you there. It is a night game. This is Cameron Mitchell. His great speed, but oh, a great play by cornerback Dave McKee, the senior out of hold in Utah. There was a great play by a defensive back. That was a tremendous play defensively, and it shows a good job of scouting. Watch, they'll come with a misdirection play. Remember that option they ran before? Well, they'll pitch it back. They are famous. They won two big ball games this year with those end of rounds, and you can see that the Brigham Young staff did a great job of preparation. The other defender on the play was David Opu. Third down and huge yardage. Quick kick. Well, we don't see that very often. That was Washington State's Don LeBaum. That can be a great weapon. Let's see where that went out of bounds. At the 15-yard right. line. You'll notice the quarterback tosses the ball back to the kicker. Everybody blocks straight ahead, and he just kicks it off his foot. He kicks it a little bit too far to the right, but it's still down to the 15-yard line. It's a very, very fine weapon. In fact, I did that once against Woody Hayes three times in the first half. How'd you make out? 
69 yards in average. Lost the game, but quick <laughs> kick was terrific. <laughs> All right. BYU leading 7 to nothing. 6.36 left to play first quarter. We'll start from the BYU 15-yard line. Two wide receivers are out to the left. The quarterback, Jim McMahon, just moved his fullback, Hamilton. And this is Hamilton. Oh, what a hole. Hamilton across the 20. Picked up about six yards on the play. Washington State's defenders, Elkington, Mike Walker, Ilasara, Collins, Amo, Blakeney, White, Jeff Files, Nate Bradley, John West, Paul Sorensen, second down four at the BYU 21-yard line. Second and four. Out of bounds. Scott Colley, the junior out of San Jose, California, was just out of bounds when he caught that pass. I noticed a very quick wrist type very. of thrower that McMahon is. He's not a full arm or no, a shoulder turn thrower. He's got a great wrist and a great action. The one thing I noticed, though, he seems to be throwing and favoring that bad knee. He doesn't seem to be planting it and drilling the football. Watch, I think, the next time we see it in slow motion. He's not planting that back foot and delivering the football as strong as I've seen him do it in the past. Third and four for BYU in its own 21-yard line. And down goes McMahon. A good defensive play. I think that might have been Ken Collins. Yep, Ken Collins, a senior tackle out of Cashmere, California. Good play, and so now that quick kick by Washington State appears no to be question. paying off. Now watch him. He's not. See his left, his left uh, knee there with that brace. He's not moving like a, uh, like he had before he hurt that leg. That's going to be a key to this ball game. How much pressure they can put on that kid. Bill Gribble stands back inside the Washington State 40. Mike Mees, who averaged 40.9 yards per punt during the regular season, is back to kick from the goal line. Do we have a delay of game here? If so, Washington State could wind up here with excellent field position. Yes, says referee Jack Gatto. Delay of game with 5-12 left to play in the first quarter. Brigham Young is leading 7-0 on a McMahon to Plater pass. What a night for football. 69 degrees at kickoff time. A capacity crowd here at Jack Murphy Stadium for the fourth annual Holiday Bowl. Gribble at the Washington State 43. What a super bit of coverage by BYU's John Mannion, a defensive back. A 41-yard punt, minus two yards on the return, thanks to that young man right there. Boy, what a play. John Mannion. Mike Smith, do you have anything in the way of an update on that voting for our fans around the country, their choice of most valuable player? Right now, they say it's Herschel Walker with about 38% of the vote to about 33% from Jim McMahon. Marcus Allen third, Bob Crable fourth. Uh, 50 cent dialing charge local. You can't use a pay phone. You can't use operator assist. Right back to you. Very good. Casper to his tailback. And the option attack, Mike Martin, the new tailback, a junior out of Tacoma. Incidentally, I was checking the statistics. He's their leading scorer. They use him ordinarily in their short yardage situation. But here they are using him uh, from this point in the field, and he comes up with a good gain of about six yards on first down. Well, I think what, one of the problems right now with their attack is their number one player running-wise, Harris, is out of the ball game. And that's why Mike Martin is in the game. Harris ran a deep route out of the backfield, and in making a, a tremendous effort, sustained an injury and we don't know how serious it is yet. This is Mitchell in motion. Oh, that was Mike Martin carrying and that was middle linebacker Kyle Whittingham with his second big individual hit of the game. And what I mentioned, his father might be proud of him. Here he is, the middle linebacker is the key to their deep 4-3 defense. His father is the defensive coordinator of the Brigham Young team. And I'll tell you one thing, Wow, that was a great shot. You see, the thing that was great about that, he stopped his play and drove him backwards. Third down, two at the Washington State 49. Mitchell again is the man in motion. And a first down run by Don LeBaum. A 
freshman running back. So Washington State at the BYU 46 yard line for a first and 10. Mike, you have a special guest with you? A special presentation now from the Citizens Watch Company and their spokesman, Mr. Joel Horner. Joel? On behalf of Citizen Watch Company, I would like to present the Holiday Bowl, the official watch of the Holiday Bowl. We're proud to be part of the activities here tonight. Again, my congratulations. Joel, thank you. Ray, Lee, back to you. Okay, that was Don LaBomb for short yardage. That's L A capital B O M M E. Tackle made by Kevin Walker out of the secondary. Gain about a yard, 45 yard line, second down nine. The Washington State University sidelines across the field from our Mislu television booth. 7 0, Brigham Young leading. 2.40 left to play, first quarter, the clock running. In motion left, Escalera. Pass complete inside the BYU 40 around the 39 yard line to Jeff Keller senior out of Baldwin Park California tackle made by cornerback Dave McKee. So Washington State slowly moving into position here. This is more of their type of ball game the short passing game and a good running attack. They came out smoking and it didn't work very well. Gain on the play seven yards. Capacity crowd here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Second down three after that seven yard gain. Mitchell came in motion. And that looks like enough for a first down at the 35 yard line on the keeper by Cleet Casper. So Washington State. And this was all set up as a result of a quick kick that put BYU deep. Then the Washington State defense took over, sacked McMahon on a third down. Here they are now with a first down at the BYU 35-yard line. Less than two minutes to play in the first quarter. Mitchell and Jones are now the wide receivers. Jones to the left. Mitchell is off to the right. This is Mitchell now in motion. Casper. Interception. Linebacker Mike O'Neill. A junior out of Hacienda Heights, California. I don't think Casper uh, ever saw him. No, what they did, they put a man in motion. You'll see the quarterback rolling out now. The linebacker from the inside slips in. He doesn't even see him. Interception right there. Now watch. He takes off of the nearest sideline. A good play. They try to strip the ball from him right there. But I tell you what, number 12 will be in the ball game pretty soon. You see the quarterback rolling out. The linebacker comes from the inside. Doesn't see him. Interception, BYU. Back live, first down, BYU on the interception at their own 47. McMahon on first down. Out of the backfield, this is Pettis, one of his fine receivers. That's a first down at the 42-yard line of Washington State. What a great group of receivers that Jim McMahon has to throw to. His great tight end, Gordon Hudson. You saw Pettis there out of the backfield. He has Plater, who caught a touchdown pass tonight. He has Scott Colley. He has Neil Ballholm. Great receivers. There's Mike O'Neill, who made the interception. <laughs> Happiness is being young and playing in the Holiday Bowl. <laughs> Handsome young man. First down play coming up. Fumble! At the bottom of the pile, we believe, will be McMahon, the defender nearest him. The quarterback gets out of there a little bit too fast, and he drops the ball and picks it up. Now, this is dangerous right here. You got the world's greatest quarterback running for a two-yard gain. Get out, Jim. Get out. In fact, he wound up with no gain. <laughs> I tell you, he should run the other way. You'll see it again. See, he starts to move out of there too fast. You notice his right foot. There was a separation in there. He doesn't get the ball. He picks it up. Now, if he picks that ball up, sit down, boy. No gain. Back live. Second and 10 for BYU. 43-yard line of Washington State. This is his big pullback, Hamilton. And picks up about seven yards. It's going to be a third down and about three, maybe four, on the final play of the first quarter. So for the fourth annual Holiday Bowl, at the end of the first quarter, BYU leading Washington State by a score of seven to nothing. And we'll return. We'll return to Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, California, after these words from our local stations. Thank <laughs> you.
Back at the fourth annual Holiday Bowl, Brigham Young University leading by a score of seven to nothing. BYU now moving from right to left, has a third down and five at the Washington State 37 yard line. Wide receiver out to the right. Pettis was in motion, the tailback. McMahon. Oh, he hits his big tight end, Hudson. Beautifully executed. His number one receiver in the regular season, Gordon Hudson, worked his way clear. He's only a sophomore out of a sophomore out of Kennewick, Washington, Lee. He will be an All-American by the time he's finished. He hits the seam. In other words, he goes in between the ball, the defenders, breaks a tackle of 28, keeps right up down the sideline. That guy's a fine football player. Result, a big first down at the 11-yard line of Washington State on the first play of the second quarter. Pettison, Hamilton are the running backs. Ball home was in motion. Pettis, what a beautiful bit of scrambling. And Pettis, ever so alert, working his way clear. And the result is a gain down to the seven yard line of about four yards. Absolutely great athletic play by the quarterback. Remember now, you get a chance to vote for that most valuable player. How are they coming in, Mike? Right now, it's still Herschel Walker, about a 3,000 vote lead over Jim McMahon. We have about 50,000 votes into this point. We'll keep those phone numbers coming, and you keep the calls coming, right? Right. Gain of four yards. It is now second down six at the seven-yard line of Washington State. 14 minutes left to play first half. 7-0 BYU. Uh, just led his intended receiver with a penalty flag down. That was Pettis, the tailback. But a penalty flag down at the line of, oh no, about four yards behind the line. Let's see what referee Jack Gatto has to say. Illegal motion against BYU. Now, Washington State can accept a third and six or a second at about 11. What do you think, Lee? Well, I, my personal opinion is this. They're probably going to take the play because... Uh, uh, this guy is such a great football player. Six yards doesn't make any difference to him. He'll throw it. They'll probably decline the penalty and just make it, let the down go away. There it is. Okay. Now, if it doesn't work, <laughs> we'll get all those phone calls, right? Third and six <laughs> at the seven-yard line of Washington State. Some new defenders just uh, checked in for Washington State. They brought in six defensive backs. Foul home is wide to the right. Third and six. Touchdown. Beautifully thrown. There he is, the tight end, the young man that you like, Lee Corso, oh, Gordon what. Hudson. What happens here, they got they throw six defensive backs in there, they play man for man, but they don't have, there's very few teams in the country that have a man that can cover a guy six feet four, 230 pounds. And all he does, you see him get away from number 41, it's like basketball. He beats him one on one. And I tell you one thing, of all the films I saw, I saw him miss one pass in all the games. Extra point attempt, Kurt Gunther. BYU has point number 14 on the board. Incidentally, during the regular season, Hudson caught 10 touchdown passes. And so, the fourth annual Holiday Bowl has 14 minutes remaining in the second quarter. Okay. We'll be back after these messages. Well, Woods Cross, Utah, wherever you are, I hope you're looking in at halftime. Magic Moments, a special feature that I know you will enjoy. So this capacity crowd looks on as Kurt Gunther will kick off to freshman Don LeBon off to our left at the goal line. 13.58 left to play, first half, BYU. Two touchdown passes by Jim McMahon. This is what that kickoff returner looks at, right? Five, ten. Good return. Penalty flag down. A penalty flag is down. The return was to the 27 yard line. That drive by BYU, 47 yards. It followed a pass interception by linebacker Michael Neal. Out to the 
42 yard line on the 15 yard penalty against BYU for. Is that a personal foul? Penalty? Yes, sir. Hitting after the ball. Number, number 12's in. Ricky Turner. A sophomore out of Compton, California. He's exciting. Now remember, all season long, Coach Jim Walden's been alternating these quarterbacks with great, great success. This is Turner. Glad to hit Keller. Glad to hit Jeff Keller. But Turner off target on first down, so it'll be second down and 10. 1931. The Rose Bowl, the last time that the Washington State University Cougars played in a postseason game. And they've been enjoying themselves in San Diego, the squad and their followers, and officials and coaches. Out to the left, Keller for one, Mitchell for another. by tailback Tim Harris and I'm happy that this young man who had been shaken up earlier and, uh, the only report we had was that he had been knocked out didn't know whether he'd be back or not but here he is and Tim Harris needless to say as you take a look at those statistics is an important member of this offense yeah but he's not well either you see him tap his head he tried to play but he's, he's not going to be able to play or again gain four yards third down six this game has been a sellout for some time after the four-yard gain by Harris on the pitch, it is third and six at the 46-yard line of Washington State. Three wide receivers, one left, two right. Short of a first down, T.J. Jones hit the 49-yard line. It's going to be fourth down. Washington State trailing 14 to nothing here early in the second quarter. Will apparently have to kick the ball away. Before we have a punt, BYU elects to take a timeout as their defensive captain and outstanding linebacker, Kyle Whittingham, wants to come over and talk with the BYU coaching staff. Well, Lee Corso, I think we have a, an instant here. With, and when we come back, I'm going to ask you what I'm going to ask you. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to remind the folks that it's 14 to nothing BYU it's from our local station. Tim Davey, the regular punter for Washington State, injured earlier, so their place kicker, Kevin Morris, will be taking to by Sikahima, who stands back at the BYU 10-yard line. Good hang time, fair catch, Sikahima, 17-yard line. Well, under the condition to Hunting on a regular basis. I think Morris did a pretty good job that time. The 34-yard punt, but no return. That's the key. So Jim McMahon, there is no way we would ever have enough time in a telecast to tell you of all the records that he has set passing. And it's amazing when his first year, his freshman year, he only passed for about 125 yards. 56 national records. Shifting into the eye. This is Pettis, and very good defense. Gain, one, maybe two yards. Joe Taylor, the junior defensive back out of Jersey City, New Jersey, made the hit. Well, the Washington State band is certainly still uh, vociferous in their support of their team. You see the quarterback toss sweep, a good, good protection to the outside, but watch number 41 turn to play in. Really nice play there, and then a pursuit run him off the field. BIU has always had a tendency when the I formation to run the football. They basically throw it in a split like this. Gain of about one. So on second and nine, McMahon, a penalty flag off to his right. Pass is complete. Quite a grab by Wayman Hamilton. But a flag, two flags in fact are down. Lee Corso was injured again. He came back in for just one play and remains to be seen whether he'll be back or not. The penalty obviously against BYU was a game short of a first down that time on the pass completed by McMahon. From the line of scrimmage, five yards, back to the 14-yard line. Here's referee Jack Gatto. Illegal motion. Illegal motion. Illegal motion is the penalty. And in 
with a play selection is Neil Ballholm, junior out of Vancouver, Washington. Second down, 14 at the 14 yard line of BYU. The official says no, we're not ready to start. Why am I? Is the up back in the eye formation. Scott Pettis is the tailback. Two wide receivers set off to the right. Second and 14 play. Fake was to the tailback. And there is the tailback, Pettis. And a good gain out to the 24 yard line of 10 yards. It'll be third and four. McMahon seems to be leading to do an exceptional job of picking out that second and third receiver. No question about it. They must work on it religiously. One of the things, when he starts to scramble, as you'll see, he'll fake the ball to the tailback right here. The tailback is now coming out of the back. They practice this. This is not luck. Those guys know exactly where to run when he scrambles. The kid makes a good catch. Maneuvers. The game. Ten-yard gain. Third down, four at the 24-yard line of BYU. 14 nothing. Brigham Young leading. 32nd quarter. Good protection. Was that a good catch? No, say the official. It's out of bounds. Right in front of the Brigham Young bench. Players on the sidelines are not totally convinced. Jim Walden's very happy, of course, on the far sidelines. It is fourth down. It is punt formation time. Mike Lees, the punter. To return it, Bill Gribble back at the Washington State 30-yard line or so. During the, there's Gribble Mees during the regular season average 40.9. Time left to play first half. 11 minutes, 16 seconds in this fourth annual Holiday Bowl. Immediately, is the timing is not perfect. The kid makes a great block right here, but let me show you something that Taylor, after it's blocked, you know, he could pick this ball up and run it and kick it. In my opinion, right there, he should have tried to kick it right there. So you, you mean Mike B should have done that? Sure, he should have kicked that football right there because now they got it down to the 24 yard line. So Washington State trailing 14 to nothing has a great scoring opportunity oh, great. at the BYU 24 yard line. Guy. See the timing is high and the kid dies from the area. Great block. What an individual effort by number three. But now as the ball is loose there, the kicker can get up and oh, kick the ball. The There's nobody there. Measurement for the down. It appeared to me that Turner did pick up a first down as he faked the pitch and kept. And it is a first down. Washington State. BYU 13 yard line. And 52 remaining here in the first half. Ricky Turner, sophomore out of Compton, California. Now he has Mitchell and Keller as his wide receivers out to the left. He has Mike, Mike Martin and Don LaBaum as the running backs. Boy, what a hit. What a hit by Michael Neal earlier at intercept a pass. In play, but you see, if they're stopping that play, that's why the option play went. One of those two plays are going to be good. I wouldn't be surprised right now if he didn't make that play come out with the option. Gain of two, second down, eight at the 11 yard line of BYU as we have a close up look at Ricky Turner. There he comes. He's close to a first down around the three yard line. Kyle Whittingham made the tackle, but not before Turner is down. Close to a first down at around the four yard line. And it's like. Right, now you see him take a reverse pivot and they go the option the other way. They call it this. Now uh, he's option in the outside man. He cuts in. The difference between this quarterback and the one previously is his quickness and his feet. Watch his feet. Boom. You can't coach that right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's natural athletic ability. Measurement for the down around the four yard line. 
Now BYU will be going into their short yardage defense here. They'll be taking off Steve Brady, their free safety. They'll bring in Barry Oates. So it's about two feet shy of a first down between the three and four yard line. Second down coming up. They're going to bring in Jamie White. He's a second tight end. Meanwhile, injured player is Brandon Flint, a sophomore defender out of Layton, Utah. Number 99 comes to the sideline. There is Ward Leland who handles the extra point kicking chores for Washington State. Hoping for some action here. 50 left to play first half, 14-0 BYU. Third down, about a foot away from a first down. And the first down is picked up by Don LeBomb down to about the two-yard line. It'll be first and goal to go as Jim Walden getting ready to send in the play. Have you voted yet? This is your opportunity to vote for your version of the most valuable player. We've given you four choices. Jim McMahon, who's thrown two touchdown passes tonight. Marcus Allen, the great Southern California tailback. Herschel Walker, the great sophomore running back out of Georgia. And Bob Crable, the great linebacker from Notre Dame. It'll cost you 50 cents to vote for your most valuable player. Poppy is out wide to the left of wide, the only wide receiver. LeBob! Remember they made that great tackle on that number 21 before? Well, if they're going to tackle that guy, they can't take the ball back. And that's the option right there. It's a tremendous play because it's a triple option. Run the ball, tail back, run the ball, quarterback, and pitch it out. You can't stop holding it. So, Poppy is the holder. Leland will try for the extra point. Ward Leland. Young, 14, Washington State, 7. We'll return to this fourth annual Holiday Bowl right after this. And so, at the Holiday Bowl, Washington State is on the board, 14 to 7. By Sakahima is the one deep back. Bruce Hansen is the other. As Washington State capitalizes on a block punt by Joe Taylor and turns it into a touchdown scored by Ricky Turner. Kevin Morris to kick off. And we have a ball moving in here. Line drive kick. Crazy bounces. Look out. That's a free ball. Now a penalty flag went down at the Washington State 25-yard line. I don't know what happened. Still to come, and yet another bowl game on Ms. Lou. The last day of this year, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Mississippi State and Kansas in the Hall of Fame Bowl from Birmingham, Alabama. Say hello to my mother, you well soon. That was Ricky Turner. The young quarterback who just scored that touchdown, dedicating this game to his grandmother who was hospitalized. Meanwhile, the penalty was against BYU. Now the infraction apparently occurred out in front of the kick returner, out around the 25-yard line. Correct. When it does that, it's usually some kind of an unnecessary reference, but I'm not sure that it wasn't two guys scuffling, and I think it's probably the penalties were negated. I'm not sure. I think it will be probably just left like it is. Yet another bowl game, New Year's Eve in Houston. UCLA and Michigan. And wow, should that send off spark? You'll be there, Lee? Oh, I hope so. I hope I do well enough tonight to like go. <laughs> okay, we'll be there. So there is no penalty being measured off, whatever infraction. Apparently they uh, offset each other. Offsetting. First down, BYU at the Brigham Young 13 yard line. 9 18 remaining in the first half. Wayman Hamilton and Scott Pettis will be the BYU running backs behind quarterback Jim McMahon. 
coach Lavelle Edwards has had outstanding success at BYU. A succession of fine quarterbacks. Mark Wilson, Gifford Nielsen, now Jim McMahon. He had his backup in the lineup at the same time tonight. Left-handed quarterback Steve Young, and he threw a big pass for a big gainer. This is Pettis. Little screen. He had two men in front of him. Turns it into a game for about 13 out to around the 20-yard line for about seven yards. Mike Smith, what's the latest? What's the latest report on our voting for most valuable player? Ray, I think the MVP voting just about as close as tonight's ball game. Jim McMahon now pulling up on Herschel Walker, trails him by about 500. Marcus Allen, 10,000 off the pace. Keep those calls coming in. Again, a 50-cent dialing charge on local calls. Very good, Mike. Second down three. Here comes Pettis. Did he get the first down? He's very close. No, nope. he's going to be shy. Going to be shy around the 22-yard line by about a yard and a half. First down. Pettis has good speed and very quick feet. Very quick feet. He's not very big either, so he makes it up with his quickness. That man's big. He's probably about four foot one. It's just the angle. <laughs> <laughs> That's Washington State's T.J. Jones, one of their wide receivers. BYU, third down and one at their own 23. He just leaned forward enough for a first down at the 25-yard line. Now, changes for BYU. Wide receiver Scott Colley, who had been shaken up earlier in the game, number three comes in. There's a young man who was injured, Tim Davey, the Washington State punter. He has not returned since he suffered that leg injury. I'm okay. On first down, McMahon. And there's the ever-present Pettis, another first down. And out across the, but he's ruled out of bounds at the 39-yard line. He has a great knack of finding open places. You see what they're doing. They're you see that guy tight end, that my favorite, going across there? Well, they're dragging him across there. Therefore, if the guys drop back deep, they're going to throw the ball in front of them. Beautifully conceived play. A great offensive theory. Drive a man deep, drag a man underneath. Scott Pettis is a junior from Stockton, California. That reception gives BYU a first down at the Brigham Young 44-yard line. Plater and Balbo are wide out to the left. With eight minutes left to play in the first half, and BYU leading 14-7. Not only to the line of scrimmage, but maybe picked up a gain of about a yard. Close to it, where it's run out of bounds by senior tackle Ken Collins out of Cashmere, California. No, he didn't get he did not he did not get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss in a play of about two yards. Incidentally, that voting for the most valuable player is now up over 60,000 votes cast. I think that's a, a great idea to give the fans a chance to vote for their choice. Absolutely. Jim McMahon sets up a second down and 11th play from the Brigham Young 42-yard line. Now he sends out wide to the left, Glenn Kozlowski, a freshman receiver, wide to the right. Now there goes uh, Pettis in motion. Yes, Kozlowski says the official. Or did they say no? No, no. I thought he signaled that it was good. My mistake. Glenn Kozlowski, a freshman out of Carlsbad, Canada. Okay, this is where the same play with the quarterback rolled out to hit the tight end before. Now the kid dives. You must have your feet in bounds with possession of the ball. He does not. The ball is out of bounds. Good call. Now you see that guy about three feet? He ought to see it. Good call. Well, there's Glenn Kozlowski, who almost made a great catch, but with the incomplete pass, it's third and 11 at the Brigham Young 42, midway second quarter. That's Hamilton in motion, the fullback. There's a completion. Wide receiver, Neil Bauholm. First down, Washington State 42 yard line. Mind you now, Jim McMahon is throwing against the defense and allowed an average. 
average of only 123 yards passing during the season. He's already well over that. Now see what he's doing here. You'll see a man going in motion to change the coverage. Now watch the guy go out and just find an open spot. See him turn around? Boom. Throws it to a great, great play. Result, first down, Washington State, 42-yard line. Here he comes firing again. A tremendous, tremendous catch by Scott Pauley. And I'll tell you something, that was good defense. He had a bad right with him. There's no question about it. Now watch, he'll throw the ball to a spot, and the kid comes back and makes a great catch. Watch the official. The official does not see the ball. Now watch this right here. And he, he can't see it in the play up. If you pull the ball out here, the official will not see if he catches or not. And he looks to the other official for the call. I hope the this official doesn't see it and he looks great catch. As a result, first down, Brigham Young, 22-yard line of Washington State. Later and Balhome were wide to the right. Balhome came in motion. He has Was the man in motion defending was Nate Bradley the senior out of Santa Ana California but McMahon after a very slow start is in high gear now you ever notice that when a passer gets hot he gets hot he starts hitting everything there he goes back to pass again they put a man in motion they throw the ball to the man in motion more than anybody I've seen he gets it out there good catch the guy is hot he'll continue to throw the football first and goal BYU, Washington State 7. Collie and Kozlowski are wide receivers. This is for Kozlowski. The defender was Jeff Files. But Kozlowski, who earlier almost came up with a great catch, was the intended receiver this time. All right, this is a three-step. In other words, he just throws the ball to a spot. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage. Now, the reason why this play is not successful, 41 comes up with a great play at the last minute. Right there. A very controversial face mask call possible. This drive began back at the BYU 13-yard line. Second and goal, Washington State 7. Pressure. Great pressure that time, supplied by Mark Bleiss, a senior defender out of Lafayette, California. Number 18 put good pressure that time. They brought a, they brought a secondary man. See, that's the first time they blitzed them from the secondary, and obviously that's what it looks like. They're going to have to do more of that, doesn't it? Now, with 6.36 left to play in the first half, with our Washington State cheerleaders looking on, McMahon will bring, Washington, will bring the BYU up to the line. Third and goal, Washington State 7. BYU leading 14 to 7. Watch the tight end. Just inside the five yard land. How did you know Gordon Hudson, the tight end, was trying to catch that ball? Because he's the best player they got. <laughs> and when they get down there, they go throw the ball to the best player. Gain of four. Good grab. By Brett White, sophomore out of Sparks, Nevada, a linebacker. We're going to have a fourth and goal. Right. See, what they're trying, the tight end just drags out there, makes great catch concentration wise. He's a big target. See, anytime you got a big target, six feet four around a goal line, it's very, very after pro to throw the ball to. Now, Jim Walden, Walden, the Washington State coach, is looking on, and BYU has not yet decided whether they're going to go for three. I think if I'm any judge, and maybe I'm just doing too much guessing here, I think Jim McMahon was trying to talk the coach into going for the touchdown. Well, but, and the special unit, the kicking team, just started onto the field. Now they came back along the sideline, so no decision has been made as yet. Well, see, the offensive team is telling the guy, we want to go for it, and the coach is the guy that's going to make the decision. I don't care what those guys say. Kurt Gunther is going to try to put three points on the board. The holder is Tom Homo. I'm going to tell you right now, no matter what happens, I think this is a good call, and I'll tell you why. Because right at this moment, Washington State had a little momentum going for it, so he could get three points. It was only a four-point swing down at the other end. Gunther was successful on 10 of 19 field goal attempts in the regular season. This will be a 20-yard attempt. Hash mark left. BYU adds 
to its lead with 6.15 left to play in the first half. The score changes to Brigham Young, 17. Washington State, 7. We'll return to this fourth annual Holiday Bowl right after this. Six minutes, 15 seconds left to play, first half, and we're here. We, Ms. Lou, Mike Smith, Lee Corso, and I'm Ray Scott. Hope you're enjoying the action. As we're all getting into the spirit of the holiday season, the deep man for Washington State is freshman Don LaBaum. He's had a couple of fine returns already. Gunther kicks. see whether it will, will it be Ricky Turner, the quarterback who drove Washington State to their score. Washington State University, represented by all ages. Is she a girl? Or he, maybe? <laughs> okay. Here we go. Washington State on the touchback from the Washington State 20-yard line. Galera and Keller are the wide receivers. That's Keller. Ricky Turner. On a keeper. Brings it out. For about eight yards to the 28-yard line. He is enough time left here in the first half. A little less than six minutes when the ball is next snap by quarterback Steve Sebahar. Play brought in from the sidelines by running back Mike Martin. Junior out of Tacoma. Cameron Mitchell, a senior wide receiver from Richland, Washington, is out to the left. They use him a lot as a man in motion. He has good speed. The bomb and Martin, the running backs. There's Keller. Mike Martin appears to have a first down out across the 30. Yep, first down. Washington State. Junior Filiaga. Whittingham making the defensive play for BYU. And Brandon Flint, who had left the game earlier with a slight injury, a sophomore out of late, is back in the game for BYU number 99. First down, Washington State at their own 31-yard line. Clock running 17-7, BYU leading late in the first half. Good, quite get it to his big tight end, Pat Beach. Senior out of Pullman. That could have gone for big yardage. Steve Brady was defending on the play. That's the other part of the triple option where they either give the ball to the tailback, quarterback runs it, or they throw a quick pass in that area. It just was a little bit too far. Out wide to the right is Jeff Hoppy. He's out wide for 81. Gets it out to the 36-yard line, where it will be third down and five. So a key third down coming up here for Washington State, trailing 17 to seven. Now you watch the quarterback do a reverse fit. The reason why this play doesn't work is the end plays both the quarterback and the pitch out. Now watch you come right down to 93. 93 takes the quarterback and the pitch out. You cannot get a better play than that right there. mispronunciation who made that fine defensive play on second down it is now fourth down by Sekahima will be the return man did you notice how I said number 93 I noticed <laughs> all right Morris the punt Sekahima stops the clock very smart BYU 34 yard line and of course with a with a passer like McMahon and that great core of receivers, plenty of time left for BYU to add to its lead. Leading 17 to 7 here. Robert, go, Robert. Let's see if we can pick out the wide receivers. Dan Flater will be one. He caught a touchdown pass already from McMahon, the first touchdown of the game. 
86 will be one wide receiver. Number 89, Neil Balholm will be another wide receiver. The running backs are Hamilton and Sikahima stays in the game. Number 23, by Sikahima, who carried back that punt. And may it on first down. This is Hamilton. Up to the 41 yard line for six yards. We get a chance here. Let's check on what the man has done so far in the way of vital statistics. Remember now, he was all, what is it, 56 NC2A passing records? Uh, here comes back and drops, and everybody drops deep, and this is a planned play. He looks deep, he dumps it off. The, now it's just like that little sweep from the eye formation. He breaks a tackle, good hands, good play. It was a gain of six. Wide open. This was Lowski down to the 24 yard line. Kozlowski, the freshman out of Carlsbad, Canada. Now, watch him, watch him run after he catches the ball. This is what you cannot teach a, bat, a receiver. Once he catches the football, you become a running back. Great play. That's a sign of excellent coaching right there. When a kid will break right now. See that? Take off. He made eight extra yards by his effort alone. Result, first down at the 23-yard line of Washington State. Valheim is in motion. Hot. There's the fullback, Hamilton. Hot. He went out of bounds at the 15-yard line. That is not a touchdown. Wayman Hamilton, a sophomore out of Calipatria, Calipatria Utah. The quarterback goes back. They blitz him. You see the outside people, the outside cornerback blitz. That's his area. Great play by McMahon right there. He steps out of bounds. Right there, right there. Out of bounds, just inside the 15-yard line. Gain of eight, second down two. You notice why I said they're hot, they're hot, they start moving. Collie and Kozlowski now are the wide receivers. Collie to the right, Kozlowski to the left. Second and two at the 15 of Washington State. Kozlowski, first down, six or seven yard line. McMahon really has it going right now. How many times has he gone to the air? We'll check our unofficial statistics here. McMahon, we have 18 of 25. All right, he and goes he's back already to over 200 here. yards. He goes back to, and it's one on one cover. See, he just read one on one. 41 has got 20. There's no way he can cover it. Not with a quarterback like McMahon. First and goal to go. Seven-yard line of Washington State. A great play on Mike Martin. A super play by... See if we can pick up who that defender was there for Washington State. Ken Emo, an outside linebacker. Ken Emo. Junior out, junior out of Lake Stevens, Washington, made a fine play, and there's a loss back to the 11 and a half. Now, the reason this happened, he drops back, but they're playing man-for-man -man coverage. You see, 34 has that guy man-for-man. -man. The screen play is not good the closer you get to the goal line. Second and goal, but the ball is back now near the 12-yard line as McMahon shouts instructions out to his wide receiver to the right. No, that was, I'm sorry, that was by, by Sikahima. Now, the quarterback goes back. He wants to throw the ball to the right, as you'll see him over there. But there's nobody open. Now, the scramble drill. Throws it back. Great play here, though, by the Washington State team. Watch them converge. 41, right there. The defensive play was made by Jeff Files. It is third and goal at the Washington State 5 on the pass to Sikahima.
to give BYU a first and goal at the Washington State one yard line. We could not see where his bottom hand was. It, it might have been on his back. Right now, you can see maybe that left hand is on his back, but I, I doubt it. I'd say that's a great defensive play. Back live. Hamilton does not get into the end zone. Wayman Hamilton. No gain on the play. It'll be second and goal. And Scott Colley, a wide receiver, checks into the lineup. Washington State's defenders from our ground level camera. The ball is exactly where it was on first down. It is second and goal at the one yard line of Washington State. Out into the end zone. I think that was the cornerback, Jeff Files. Yes, it was. A senior out of Wenatchee made a great play. No gain. It's third and goal. Now in comes the play from the sidelines. Neil Bauholm. Now you watch the line come off here. The fullback makes a good read. He breaks it to the outside, but it's good pursuit. You know, sometimes, Ray, good passing teams have a problem running the football when they get down here. Sikahima and Hamilton are the running backs. Wayman Hamilton, the sophomore out of Calipatria. Into the end zone. Watch the way this play works. This is opposite. I'll bet you a dollar that the computer says that they do not run the fullback to the tight end side on that side because the guy's close. Boom, touchdown. They ran two plays to the left, put the same formation, and confused the Washington State team by going to the right. You see, they have been going to the left. Out to the right. Good play. Touchdown. So for BYU. Kurt Gunther will try for point number 24 with 106 to play in the first half. And Gunther is on target again. And so BYU turns what was considered by many of the fans here a controversial pass interference call into a touchdown. And a 17-point lead as we near halftime. And Mike Smith, I know you've been tallying that voting on our most valuable player in the country. How does it stand right now? Well, right now, Jim McMahon has taken over the lead by about 200 votes over Herschel Walker. Marcus Allen has to make enough to do. He's about 15,000 votes off the base. And not too much support so far for Bob Grable from Notre Dame, right? Okay. There's the way you can vote. All of the uh, area codes are the same. Area code 900. And then a number for each player. McMahon, Herschel Walker, Bob Grable, and Marcus Allen. Bomb back at the goal line to our left. 106 left to play. First half. 24 to 7. BYU representing the Western Athletic Conference against Washington State University of the Pac-10. Gunther will handle the kickoff chores. He already has a field goal in addition to his three extra points. You know it's interesting, Ray. But there wasn't very much time in the clock, and you made a very astute comment. There's plenty of time for BYU. You know they went down and scored some passes. There's plenty of time for Washington State. That's right. LeBaum at the three. 10, 15. And goes out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And a Washington State University player is down at the Washington State 24-yard line. to other special items we will have a special feature entitled magic moments that drive 66 yards just three minutes and 10 seconds Great, great passing attacks. There's no question that he has a sixth stance. He knows where every receiver is going to be, and he's just an outstanding quarterback. There's no question about it. Joe Taylor, who had blocked a BYU punt to set up Washington State's only score so far, shaken up, but as you note, able to walk off under his own power. Exactly one minute left to play in the first half. 24 to 7, Brigham Young leading. Wide to the left is Paul Escalera. And Casper's the quarterback. Penalty flag down behind the line as Casper. 
Casper tries to get rid of the football in a hurry. Cleek Casper, who started the game at quarterback. I thought I saw a preliminary signal of a face mask penalty against BYU. Did you see that? Uh, I, I could. It looked like it. Yes. Yes, there it is. I can see why you, you've done this long enough. You can see those things. I never even saw that. It was a great call. 15 yard penalty. Brings the ball out to the Washington State 40. Now that play took exactly four seconds. Cameron Mitchell just brought in the Jim Walden and staff's choice of the next play with a first and ten at the Washington State 40. Mitchell goes left. Keller comes right. Tight end Pat Beach is over on the left. Short game for Robert Williams, the junior fullback out of Compton, California. Got about three yards. Now Washington State going with their hurry-up drill, their two-minute drill. Pass complete to Keller. Short of a first down by a couple of yards. So far in the first half, Brigham Young has had the big edge in time of possession. 17 minutes and some seconds versus Washington State's 11 minutes and a few seconds. Did you see a timeout called here? Correct. It was a timeout call. It's in a two-minute plan. They tried to get the ball thrown to the receiver so he could run out of bounds, but uh, obviously Brigham Young is well coached, so they did not let the man go out of bounds, and therefore it forced him to use a timeout. It'll be a third down and three, and the player who did, as you said, kept that receiver in bounds was cornerback Dave McKee. See, the theory now is for Brigham Young is to make sure that you don't give up a big play. And uh, obviously Washington State being high, being high 24 to 7, they, they can't be conservative here, but they got to get the first down at least and then try to move it in and at least get three points if they can. The scoreboard pretty much tells the story at this moment. A third down and three. Quarterback Cleet Casper has been over consulting with Jim Walden. BYU and Washington State schools well represented by not only their cheerleaders, but great numbers of fans have followed their teams here to San Diego to enjoy a holiday. All right, a third down and three. Washington State 47. Cleet Casper. Able to get the ball to his uh, receiver Jay Keller, who was open, and it's fourth down. Of course, one of the reasons there was big pressure that time being put on Casper. Fourth down and three, 20 seconds left in the half. And needless to say, Washington State trading 24 to 7 is going to try for the first down. Don't leave because if, if they don't make it, BYU's got enough time to get out there and get something else. All right. Escalera to the right. That I did not expect. Into the end zone. Right, there's a penalty on there's a penalty on number 93. You hit the quarterback after. You'll see this play coming up with the penalty. Cleet Casper was the player who was down. Quarterback throws the ball back there, turns around and stands, and he gets clobbered. After the ball is kicked, you'll eventually get hit. There and right, right there. there. He really, really got nailed by BYU's Brad. I want to pronounce this correctly. Somewhere in here I have the information. Brad Anai. Right. This could be very costly. Personal foul. But it occurred after the punt. Correct. So what will happen here is the penalty will take the ball half the distance from the 20 back to the 10 yard line. Now had that occurred before the punt, then Washington State would have kept possession of the football. Absolutely. 14 seconds left in the half. Let's see if 
Lavelle Edwards, the head man at BYU, elects to play it safe here with just a few seconds left in the half and his team leading by 17. Washington State has been behind before. They know how to come from behind. In fact, against Colorado, they were behind. It looked like out of the question. So uh, they still have the kind of offensive team that could catch the BYU Cougars. McMahon will go with three wide receivers. 14 seconds left in the half. But this is the draw to Hamilton. And the first down run out to the 22-yard line. On, unless a timeout is called, that was indeed the final play of the first half. We're down to two seconds, one second, and that's the end of the first half. The fourth annual Holiday Bowl. The score, Brigham Young 24, Washington State 7. We'll return for our halftime activities here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego after these messages. You leading at halftime, Washington State will receive the second half kickoff. In the first half, BYU had a slight edge as far as time of possession is concerned. As far as statistics are concerned, McMahon is absolutely amazing. He has completed 21 of 31 passes for 254 yards. An amazing performance by Jim McMahon. No question, and, and he came off to a, a slow start. You remember, I think he uh, was about one out of the first eight or something, and then he got hot. And I tell you what, now, Washington State's coach has told his ball club, now look, game's not out of reach. Just get out there and play your own game plan. Let's get something on the scoreboard right away. Then we're right back into the ball game. And I think that's what's going to happen. Kurt Gunther kicks. Don LaBaum is deep. Went out of bounds just about a foot or so into the end zone. So it'll be a touchback. And Washington State will have to start from the Washington State 20-yard line. Incidentally, it, in mentioning Jim McMahon's statistics in the first half, I received a note here before the game started that, that as of right now, Jim McMahon is listed as a leading candidate for the Davy O'Brien Award, named after that one-time great passer from TCU, by the Fort Worth Club to the nation's outstanding quarterback. And uh, a little bit more about it later, but as of right now, he's a leading candidate. All right. Cleet Casper is the quarterback. Good run by his tailback, the freshman, Don LaFon. Well, he's a good-looking freshman runner. Yes, he is, and he's going to have to take over for Harris because that, that young man tried to play again but obviously was hurt. Tim Harris, mentioned by Lee, was the starting tailback, was injured, tried to come back, managed just one more play, and I doubt very much if we'll see him tonight. Good gain there, nine yards on first down by Don LeBon. Could be a first down. Fullback, Robert Williams. Mike Smith along the sidelines. How's the voting coming for our MVP? Ray, Jim McMahon has taken charge in this ball game. He is also dominating the vote tally with about 36,000 votes compared to 29,000 for Herschel Walker. Heisman Trophy winner Marcus Allen way behind 11,000 votes. And Rob Grable, Bob Grable, Notre Dame, about 4,000 votes. There you see the phone numbers. Keep those phones ringing, and we'll have you a winner by the end of the game. Okay, a first down play as Casper fires. Uh-oh. Uh -oh, this could be a touchdown. 46 is gets a jump on it, all gone. Now, let me tell you what happened. At halftime, they went into that short passing game, and the BYU people were smart enough to tell their defensive backs to look for that quick game, and they did. A great play. So, Gunther will try for point number 31 for BYU. like that jumps into a 31 to 7 lead will return to this fourth annual holiday bowl after these words after exactly one minute of the second half BYU adds to its lead and now Washington State is really in a position where they must do something halftime the tangerine bowl tomorrow senior All-America football team. Will be revealed. Again, the deep man is Don LeBaum 
Uh, Lavelle Edwards along the sidelines, pleased with what has transpired so far. La bomb from the five. Touchdown made the tackle on the kickoff return. Fleet Casper. Jim McMahon warming up along the sidelines. Casper has two wide receivers to the left. Escalera and Keller. Escalera in motion. Washington State 47 yard line. Dave McKee made the stop. Incidentally, throughout the entire first half, I was recently referring to wide receiver Glenn Kozlowski of BYU as hailing from Carlsbad, Canada. I made the mistake of reading what was a misprint in our program. He is from Carlsbad, California. And for you good folk around Carlsbad, my abject apologies, and I hope that I'm back in your good graces again. First down play for Washington State from their own 47. Keller, one of the wide receivers on the end around, and BYU had a pretty well defense. Contained by Kevin Walker, a junior from Salt Lake City, and as a result, uh, no gain on the play. What they'll try to do here is fake like you're going to the right, and then what they call a counter action reverse play. Now, it's not going to work against BYU right now because the score is 34 to 7, 31 to 7. Those plays will work basically when it's a real tight ball game. Washington State, to get back in this ball game, it, it has got to go back to doing what it does the best and not worry about the scoreboard. All right, Cleek Casper under center on second and 10 from the Washington State 47. Right there. Right there. That's his big tight end inside the 30. Pat Feet, senior out of Pullman. Washington State has something going with a first down at the BYU 29-yard line. The tackle was made by Steve Brady. What they'll do on this play, they'll fake the ball like they're going to go to the right. If you watch it, and you watch the tight end come right across into the seam. C-89, right to the completion, perfect play. That kid's a good football player, that end. He's a captain, too. Result, first down, 29-yard line of BYU. Little draw. Short run for Tim Harris is trying to play again by God. Courageous young man. That statistic tells you what he's done for Washington State in three years. Gained just a yard that time. It'll be second down, and Harris is immediately going to leave. He'll be replaced by Don LeBon. Second and nine, 28 yard line of BYU. Early third quarter. Pass complete. Good move by Keller down to the 23 yard line. That was the same. Okay, that's the same pass play that they had intercepted. The only time difference, they only had one receiver over there. They get one on one coverage, which means there's one white jersey and one blue, and you can't stop a good guy in the white. If there's only one-on-one, -on -one and a kid makes a great effort, they're going to have to continue to probe and find out what they can do, and they can still come back and win this ball game. No Third question. and four. Third and four. BYU 23-yard line. Escalera is in motion. Boy, there was a good defensive play against the fullback, Robert Williams. Might have picked up a yard. It's going to be fourth and about two. Casper trying to get his. What they tried to do that, that time is they tried to trap the inside lineman, but the, he played a very, very good play and stopped the trap play. This is a big play right here. They could get back in this ball game if they could make this one. Fourth and three, 22 yard line of BYU. Two wide receivers to the left. It appears that Casper, on a good second effort, has a first down around the 18-yard line, where Filiaga and Morgan made the tackle. Big play.
play. Okay, First watch, down. watch the line come off. They, they really blow them off the ball. The quarterback makes the good fake. Remember, if they stop that guy, somebody else has got to be free. The quarterback lunges right there. Great effort. They're back in the ball game right now if they continue to do what they do the best and not worry about Brigham Young. Now Mitchell comes out to the left. Jones comes out to the left. First down play for Washington State. That's Mitchell number two you saw there. Right there. Oh, there's LeBon. Right there. Touchdown. Don LeBon. So Washington State has matched scores here now. Match touchdown. Okay, here's a straight old dive play. What I tell you, do the best things that they do, which is one-on-one -on -one blocking, quit messing around with those fancy plays, and go after them what they do the best. The kid makes a break and a touchdown. And here's another thing. That kid's in the place of Harris. All the years I've coached, all the kids that have come back and try to play them and hurt, never play as well as the guy who's sitting over there well. All right. That changes the score to 31 to 13. 10 40 to 3 left to play in the third quarter. Looks like they won't. Yep, they're going to bring the quarterback back in. Lee Casper. Well, Washington State has decided that there was a little bit of indecision there, apparently. And they'd rather talk things over and make absolutely certain of what they're going to try and do on what appears to be an attempt at a two-point conversion. I wonder if, uh, if I could call in Mike Smith right now and perhaps tell us a little bit more about that voting for most valuable player. Mike, I haven't had a chance to talk with you about this. Lee and I have agreed that this is an absolutely great idea, this voting by the fans for most valuable player. I think so, because everyone, I think, has his or own opinion as to who is the best college football player in this country. We gave you a select field, but four very, very outstanding players. And at this point, the fans across the country say it's Jim McMahon of BYU, 37,696 votes, and he's uh, about 5,000 votes ahead of Herschel Walker. Marcus Allen, the Heisman Trophy winner, he's way back, 13,733 votes, and Bob Grable, Notre Dame, 4,699 votes. Votes. Uh, again, if you're calling in, there is a 50 cent local dialing charge. And you cannot use a pay phone or operator assist. So we hope that you're enjoying this fan MVP. It's something new and it's something uh, innovative by Visalu. We hope you're enjoying it. We hope you're enjoying the game, right? Okay, here we go. Two point conversion. Washington State. Casper. He has a man there. and everybody goes to the right. Quarterback rolls to the right. Now that makes all the blue shirts go. This is why this works. See that guy crossing and the guy sneaks across? That's perfect. Right there, it's the guy for a two-point play. The reason why that worked is they fold one way and threw the ball back. Here he comes sneaking across, number 89, the captain, great play. That's a sensational play when it works. All right. So with the... Uh... 43 left to play in the third quarter. BYU speed is down to 16 points and will return right after these words from our local stations. Come to think of it, after four minutes and 17 seconds, we haven't seen BYU's offense. <laughs> Their defense scored the touchdown. And then they immediately had to kick off of tomorrow's Tangerine Bowl here on Ms. Lou. The football trainer. Sort of a forgotten man in many circles, but not so. We'll be telling you about him tomorrow. All right. Kick for BYU. For Washington State's Kevin Morris. He really got his foot into that. Beautiful kick. This is a very important series right now for the Washington State defense. If they can stop them and have any kind of confidence in their own ability, then the offensive team's going to come back and it's going to be a seven or eight point ball game. All right, now Jim McMahon, the quarterback. Wayman Hamilton, the fullback. Scott Pettis, the tailback. Plater wide to the right. Amazing. 254 yards against the team that has given up an average of 123 this season. He's back firing. Oh, he's going to be running. Four yards out to the 24. Remember now, he's playing 
with a heavily protected knee because he had to miss two games during the regular season. Correct, and you also see that thing around him. See that red thing? That's like a bulletproof vest, and that's to keep protection on his ribs. And those are very, very effective. Man picked up four yards. Second down, six, BYU 24-yard line. Collie and Kozlowski are the two wide receivers. So second and six. And there's a loss, and a flag is down across the field at the BYU 31-yard line. He had his fullback, Wayman Hamilton, out in the left flat, and it was right about where Hamilton and a defender were. Well, Washington State, his players are signaling that the penalty is against Brigham Young. What happened that time, Washington State went into a man-for-man -man underneath coverage. That is a very unusual penalty oh, against right. the offense. Right, now watch, see how each one of those five men underneath are running and covering a guy man-for-man? -man? It's just like basketball man-for-man -man compared to basketball zone. And, and that over there on that side, the defensive man banged him in good coverage, but the offensive man reached over and grabbed him by the face mask. I've been coaching 20 years. I've never seen that before. All right, the penalty takes the ball back to the BYU 11-yard line. Face mask penalty against the offense. Now let's see. BYU has a second and 19 at their own 11, leading 31 to 15, less than 10 minutes to play in the third quarter. Later goes out to the left. Foul home wide to the right. Pettis in a slot left. A great defensive play on the tight end, Gordon Hudson. Joe Taylor, who blocked a BYU punt in the first half, and that led to Washington State's touchdown, makes a great defensive play. All right, play. I'll tell you why this is not any good now. He goes back to pass, but they've got that. Remember that man-for-man -man coverage underneath? Number three was assigned to that guy. He did not drop off. That's why he covered him. It's a difference, and they're mixing up their coverages very well now. They're playing man-for-man -man underneath and sometimes zone underneath, and the quarterback's having a problem. Ball all the way back at the four-yard line. There's Joe Taylor, who made that great defensive play. This is a third now, and big, big yard. Made in the end zone. Short gain. Tailback, Scott Pettis. Fourth down. Washington State now, barring something unusual, is going to have great, great position here. Now watch. Instead of playing man for man, they all played zone. So when that guy snuck across, you see that guy number 66 just waiting for him? Boom, comes up, makes a great play right there. Beautiful play 96 makes. He was not covering him man for man. They got McMahon confused. That was Blakeney who made the excellent play. Deep for Washington State is Bill Gribble standing at his own 45. 46 of Washington State, dribble, good speed, but oh, what coverage by that special team of BYU. But BYU is going to go on defense now with Washington State having the ball at midfield. Do you sense it in, even in the stadium, a, a change in momentum? Do you feel it? Yes, I do, and I'll tell you this. You can see it along the sidelines of exactly. Washington State at any rate. 31 to 15, Michael. BYU leading will return to San Diego for the Holiday Bowl right after this. Washington State almost blocks this punt because a great effort by 28 right there. They beat Colorado on a block punt. That was Paul Sorensen who almost blocked it. This is Ricky Turner. New quarterback. Big gainer. He's all the way down to the BYU 34-yard line. And you're right, momentum is definitely turning here. The reason it's turning is because Washington State is now doing what they can do the best and not try. See, they're rolling out here. They'll block everybody down. This is not a pass. He just does that to get the guys backed up, takes off along the sideline. That kid's got great quickness. Finally put out of bounds by Dave McKee. Bomb just inside the 30-yard line. Gain of a little over three yards. It'll be second down and a long six. Where do they get all that energy from? <laughs> they have 
haven't stopped moving since this game started. <laughs> All right, gain of three yards for LeBomb. Second down, seven, Washington State. BYU 30-yard line, midway third quarter. Turner's carried the ball for 45 yards and scored a touchdown. Ricky Turner, he has his two wide receivers out to the left. Oh! Big mistake. The ball was covered by Robert Williams, but it was down. Now, Turner's knee hit the ground at the 31-yard line. This was a this was a break now for Washington State. That's right, because obviously it would have been a turnover. As soon as he slips right here, his knee goes down. The ball, in college football, the ball is dead. In professional football, that would have been a good play. But I'll tell you one thing about this kid Turner. He's a competitor. It's a big play right here. Third and eight at the BYU 31. Brigham Young leading 31-15. He's a competitor. Boy, is he a competitor. First down and a lot more. All right. Ricky Turner has a first down at the 18-yard line. Kevin Walker made contact to bring him down at that point. But there's a broken play that Turner turned into a big first down. Because of athletic ability, he's got quickness. He rolls out to his left. They're trying to, the guy gets a good block. They're trying to flood the area. They're trying to put more people in there. But watch this. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't coach this right there. He breaks away from one guy, gets going. The guy's a competitor. When you play with competitors, you've got chances to make big plays. Watch the way he turns on the quickness right here. That you cannot coach. Speed is the essence of victory. Back live. Oh, what a driving run by Don LeBond, who scored Washington State's second touchdown. He picked up about nine yards to the eight-yard line. Steve Brady, the free safety, had to make the tackle. More and more now, BYU secondary people That's are right. making the tackles. Good point. They're blowing the line off the ball now. You know why? They haven't tried a fancy play in the last 10 minutes, and they look like a super football team because this is what they've done in the past. Second and two at the nine. There goes LeBron inside the five. First and goal to go Washington State. Friends, I have a feeling about this game. It's going to be one like your team was in here. What, 38-37? 38-37. And, and as long as Washington State continues to do what they do best, they got a chance to win the ball game. Never play a guy in his other game. Now watch the line just come off the ball. That's just He's just blocking straight ahead. There's no coaching to that one. Just go get it. Come off the ball. First and goal at the five-yard line of BYU. Option. Oh, beautiful. Fake to the bomb. Robert Williams has a touchdown, and friends, we have a football game. It is 31 to 21. 5-16 left to play, third quarter. When you run the options, they can't cover all of basic up. Now the quarterback will fake the ball to the tailback. Boom. There's one guy. He comes down the line of scrimmage. He takes that guy, pitches it out, and nobody's there. Now, Washington State, as after their second touchdown, is going to go for two. Once you go for two once, you got to go again. Two tight ends. One wide receiver. Come on, come on, come on. The back was in motion. No. Tried to hit Tim Harris, that injured tailback who has been used as a spot performer. So, a 10-point lead for BYU. 5-16 left to play in the third quarter. There's a the replay. There's the option again. Remember, if they block straight ahead and the guy takes the tailback, that leaves the quarterback one-on-one. -on -one. Well, the guy took the tailback, great. Guy took the quarterback, great. He pitched the ball. That was the touchdown play we just saw. Mike Smith, an update on our voting. All right, Ray, we have about 100,000 votes into this point. It's still Jim McMahon, 41,000 votes to 35,000 for Herschel Walker. A little response now for Marcus Allen with about 16,000 votes, about 5,000 for Bob Grable, a linebacker in Notre Dame. We'll keep the phone calls on the screen. You keep them coming, and we'll have you a winner by the time this game is over. Okay. The deep return man we watch a pyramid type of performance by the BYU cheerleaders. The deep man for this Washington State kick by Kevin Morris will be Bruce Hanson. 
Oh, this, this is Sikahima who could not hold on to that football. He takes his eyes off the football. See, you got to catch it first before you can run it. He picks it up, and now he is in big trouble because the guys in white really think they can win it now. Now let's see what Jim McMahon and company can do. But first, we have an injured player from Washington State who is being attended to around the BYU 20-yard line as Jim McMahon talks to his teammates of BYU. Five minutes, 11 seconds uh, left to play in a third quarter. Brigham Young led by 24 to 7 at halftime, intercepted a Casper pass, ran it in for a touchdown, and led 31 to 7. But the last 14 points have been scored by Washington State. We'll return after these words. We had a slight misfire, and as a result, Brigham Young ran one play for over for five yards. It's going to be second and five, BYU at their 12-yard line. This is a pretty important series, isn't it, Lee? Again, it's, it's for uh, basically field position. If Washington State can hold them here, then they're going to get good field position against and They got a lot more confidence than they ever had. Second down, five. Man moves his fullback. Hamilton. The protection. Going deep. Out of bounds with Scott Colley. And he had very good defenders right with him. Double coverage, as I saw it. Lee. No question. I'll tell you what. Washington State has changed their defensive scheme now. What they're doing, they're playing with five defensive backs all the time. Now watch. They'll try to hit a man in his crease, in the seam there, but 48 comes back and makes a great play. That's Peter Shaw, senior out of Compton, California, the free safety, defending on the play. BYU, 6 of 12, third down conversions. Also, Washington State, 6 of 12. Now here's a big third and five for BYU. They have Pettis over there in the slot left. Pressure. Simon. One of the offensive linemen had to miss that guy by assignment wise because he never could come that free. Here he comes again for the picture. Watch. They did a little twist. All right. You see number 73 go, and that number 63 just stood there. Basically, what's happened now is BYU has lost their intensity. They lost their concentration. They've got to do something quick or this other ball club can come back and pull them out of here. That was Matt Lasara, the nose guard. Down McMahon. Now it is fourth down. Mike Knees, who had one punt block, one almost block, is standing right at the end line. The referee's right back there with him to make sure he doesn't step over the end line. That would be a safety. Good punt. Excellent punt. This is Gribble. This is the 50. 45. 40. Great field position now at the BYU 38 yard line, 323 left to play in the third quarter. Bill Gribble. So, this punt returning by him tonight is uh, nothing unusual. He's done it during the season. All right, now Ricky Turner, a sophomore from Compton, California, will direct Washington State at the BYU 39 yard line. He has Escalera wide to the left. LeBom, by the way, in the backfield, number 21, has already gained 77 yards. Incomplete. Good defense. Cornerback Dave McKee was defending, number 15, against Paul Escalera. a punt, by the way. That was a 51-yarder. That was an excellent punt when BYU really needed it. Yeah. This is a key play defensively coming up right now on second down and third down and long. They've got to contain the quarterback number 12, but most important, they've got to come up with a big play so they can get some field position for McMahon. Mitchell is out wide to the right. Keller is wide to the right. Second and 10. Brigham Young 39-yard line.
typical case of a quarterback going back, being rushed out of the pocket, but having great athletic ability. But watch his quick feet. This is what you can't coach. The acceleration, boom. The ability for him to move quicker than those guys in the blue. You see, they can't touch him. He's got great quickness. And he's a competitor. First down, BYU 25-yard line. Don LeBong down to the 21-yard line. LeBong filling in for the injured Tim Harris. And a great job being done by this freshman running back. Jim Walden along the sidelines. His team was down 31 to 7. Now it's BYU leading 31 to 21. A second down and six at the Brigham Young 21 yard line. 81 yards for Don LeBong. Both wide receivers are to the left. Escalera in motion. Close to a first down is Robert Williams around the 15 yard line. Here's this option offense working again. Absolutely, because see, they're setting the play up. They run the tailback in there, won a dive play. All right, now here it comes. Watch the tailback. That's the play he just ran before, right? Now, 80, 93's got to make a decision. He made the wrong one. He pitches it, and there goes 42 with a great effort. And I tell you what's happening right now. The speed and quickness of Turner has turned this ball game around. And the first down was the result of that last option play just inside the 15-yard line of BYU. Less than two minutes to play in the third quarter. Turner has carried eight times for 72 yards. LaBaum has carried for 83 yards. Cameron Mitchell just brought in a play from that man, Jim Walden, and his staff. Second down, eight at the 13-yard line. Wide to the right is Keller. To the left is Mitchell. Mitchell in motion. he goes to the right he's coming up he thinks it's going to be a pass he drops off he doesn't know what is happening now it's just can you run as fast as the other guy no way he doesn't wrap him up he doesn't put his hands around him that kid number 12 just runs right out of him that was and that was kyle winningham an outstanding, outstanding football an player. outstanding football player so 59 seconds left to play third quarter and the momentum of this game now belongs to washington state but BYU still has McMahon and company and the three-point lead. What's going through LaBelle well, Edwards' mind now, the coach of Brigham Young, is he's got to get his confidence back. they got to get their confidence back. they got to go back to doing exactly what they did at the beginning of the game and not worry about anything else. Hands in the second game are deep. State's kicker is fired up. <laughs> Holy smokes. You ever seen it fail? The guy can't kick it to the 10-yard, all of a sudden they get close and boom. Kevin Morris is the great kick. <laughs> that drive was 39 yards. Thanks to Fine 
Washington State defense turning the ball over to the offense in excellent position. First downs in this game, Washington State 20, Brigham Young 15. All right, now BYU trying to stem the momentum. First down for the BYU 20 yard line. McMahon going to the air, never hesitating. Almost intercepted. I don't know whether McMahon's arm was hit or he just plain misfired, but he had no receiver near there. There might have been a misread between quarterback and receiver. Absolutely. Well said because basically they have been playing five men underneath man for man and they went to zone again. Watch. Watch, he'll almost throw the ball right directly to the man because he thinks they're going to be crossing. You see? Now, the big point is that the C number three, that guy is the sixth and fifth defensive back. They're, no play, they're not playing ends anymore. Second down and ten. State. I beg your pardon, that was not Michael Neal. That was uh McMahon now, by the way, has been sacked three times in this ballgame. Loss of two. seconds have elapsed in the fourth quarter. We're having a pop last year's score at 46-45. The extra point is good. Kurt Gunther adds that one point. A ten-point lead again. It's 38-28 to 28 in favor of BYU. Are you enjoying it? This is the fourth annual Holiday Bowl and a lot more to come. Washington State will have speedster Cameron Mitchell at the goal line. 
14 minutes and 55 seconds remain. An 80-yard drive by BYU in five plays. Can this team strike? One minute and four seconds. Got there to kick off. as it went out of bounds in the end zone, so Gunther does his job. Now let's see whether Washington State can pick up. Here's that touchdown. Zimmer rolls out to the left. Now watch the pressure. There's a blitz, but he throws off his back foot, but he has such great touch. He lobs it out in front of the man who can cover it. Pettis scores a great play. Now it's Washington State. The talented Ricky Turner at quarterback. His running backs are LeBaum and Williams. Williams 42, LeBaum 21. Wide receiver set out either side. Penalty flag down. Pass is drilled. First down to the 35, unless the infraction was by Washington State. Let's see what we have. Keller caught the pass. Offside. Oh, the offensive team. That doesn't happen very often. Not very often. And I'm not sure that somebody didn't line up offside because I certainly didn't see anybody move. And that will happen sometime. The one thing that Washington State's got to be careful for now is to get a turnover here and give that blue team some more momentum because they're dangerous. So forget the first down gain of 15. So in effect, it's a 20-yard loss. It's first and 15 at the Washington State 15-yard line. Keller goes out to the left. Mitchell comes off to the right. Same running back, Williams and LeBaum. Ricky Turner. He's going deep, but it's out of bounds. Tried to set up the cornerback with that pump, but McGee didn't go for it. McKee didn't go for it. Good coverage by the cornerback, Dave McKee. Excellent coverage. Usually a play like that does not work because it's second down and long, and the cornerback knows that the guy's not going to throw the ball short. T.J. Jones, a wide receiver, brings the play into the huddle. He's their speedster. This kid averaged 28 yards per catch this year. A second and 15 play. Four-man rush. Wanted to hit Jones, but uh, throwing off balance and on the run, unable to hit his target. So now Washington State is faced with a big one, third and 15. 14.38 left to play in the fourth annual Holiday Bowl. And to all of you, from all of us, happy holidays. The Tangerine Bowl tomorrow evening, 8 p.m., Southern Mississippi and Missouri, from Orlando. On this one. Ray, in this situation, the BYU team just substituted another defensive back. They got six defensive backs in there and three linemen. Third and 15. Three man rush. No blitzing. Man's there. The big tight end, Beach. First down, 48 yard line. Pat Beach, the senior from Pullman. Washington State comes up with a big play. Now, on BYU's touchdown drive of a moment ago, exactly. McMahon hit on a third and 12. Exactly the same play. You watch the quarterback roll back. There's a man running with him. Watch the man running with him, man for man. See that guy? He can't cover him. That's exactly the same exact play that BYU used against them. So with 14-25 left in the game, Washington State comes up with a big play. There's Pat Beach taking a breather along the sidelines. First down, the Washington State 48-yard line. The bomb gets only two yards. It'll be second down and eight. Score, Brigham Young, 38. Washington State, 28. Mitchell just brought in play from the sidelines. New running back, Mike Martin, checks in. Junior from Tacoma, he'll replace the bomb, who seems to be a little bit tired right now. The freshman has done a great job in replacing the regular tailback, Tim Harris, who was injured early. Second down and eight. That was played very well defensively, that often play with Williams carrying to the 48-yard line of BYU. Good play by Brad Opu. Played very well because they had excellent pursuit. 
California Bowl tomorrow afternoon. And we understand there are some tickets still available for that Toledo-San Jose State game. Third and six. Turner, dangerous runner. There he goes. And a fine play. Was that Kyle Whittingham? Was that 59 who made that play? Yes. Kyle Whittingham makes a great play. All right, the quarterback's going to roll out the same play that number that Turner ran over Whittingham before. Now watch this time, Whittingham gets up, gets in good football position. Watch him, and he grabs him. See what I'm talking about? He puts his arms around him. He didn't try to knock him down. He grabbed him. Good play. It would have been a first down, no except question. for Whittingham's play. It's fourth down. Washington State's trying to get a new player in and another player out. Kevin Walker is back to receive this expected punt. Lands inside the 20. Oh, this is going to be down very close to that goal line. A great weapon. An accurate punter. 38 to 28. BYU leading. 12.08 left to play in the game. And we'll be back right after these words from our local station. Jim McMahon, as we look at some of those statistics, in this game has completed 28 of 38 passes, 335 yards, three touchdowns. Now it's BYU at its own three-yard line. This is Pettis trying to get outside. Practically nothing. Cornerback, Nate Bradley. Don't be lulled to sleep. I know BYU. Mike Smith, what's an update on our voting for most valuable player of the year? Ray, we're approaching 125,000 votes. The majority of them for Jim McMahon and Herschel Walker. McMahon solidly in front, 44,251 to about 38,300 for Herschel Walker. Okay, Still you'll time, though, and it could change. Still have an opportunity to vote. That last running play gained a yard. This is Pettis. He's out close to a first down. Scott Pettis, junior tailback out of Stockton, California. Watch this. This is an automatic. Right up the middle, they trap the lineman. In other words, they send the lineman across number 60, uh, 76, and they trap them. A very, very fine automatic. 60% of the plays are called on the line of scrimmage by the quarterback. Now, every third down play becomes ever more important. This is a third and one at the BYU 12. Third down conversions by BYU, 7 of 14. Pull back and run it off the left tackle. the tailback and he has a first down at the 15 yard line. I knew you'd miss. I knew you'd miss. Do you send in plays for Indiana? <laughs> Only the ones that work. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. Good play. Quarterback hands the ball to the tailback and he just gets a good off tackle play and fights himself for a first down. And the BYU player is down and it is Scott Pettis. And boy has he been a valuable player and he's oh he's a great discomfort. Scott Pettis, Jr., Stockton, California, outstanding receiver, fine runner, just been an all-around tremendous asset to this BYU team, and he picked up a first down at the Brigham Young 15-yard line with 10 minutes and 43 seconds remaining, and BYU leading 38 to 28. Again, we'll repeat those statistics for Jim McMahon in tonight's game against a team that have allowed an average of just 123 yards passing during the regular season. McMahon has picked up 335 yards on a 28 of 38 performance, three touchdown passes. And Pettis heads for the sidelines, and the new tailback, he was in there earlier, by Sikahima, a sophomore from Mesa, Arizona. Sikahima has been a punt returner, kickoff returner, running back. And he's in there now in place of Pettis. Number 23, Sikahima. The fullback is Wayman Hamilton, number 33. Wide receiver set out on either side of McVeigh. First and 10 play coming up. And no. Scooped it up. 
did wide receiver Dan Plater, who caught, caught the first touchdown pass of this game, and that seems like a long time ago and a lot of scoring. I'm hungry already, aren't you? I am. I got in line, but I, I came up short. I didn't quite get to the chili at halftime. It's a long. It's All right. an exciting type of ball game because there's so many shifts in momentum. Second and ten at the BYU 15-yard line. Collie and Kozlowski are the wide receivers out to the left. Second down and ten play. Hamilton trying to reverse his field. Loss on the play, but then McMahon picked up the ball. It was dead. It was dead. Back at the 12-yard line. So now, on the touchdown drive by BYU, their right. last touchdown drive, which moved the here to Lee, you look at it again. Okay, the quarter, if quarterback hands it off on a delay play. The fullback will pitch ball the ball mark, back. 13, this looks like one of those intramural plays that I used to use at the ATO house. Watch. He'll pitch it back to the quarterback. McMahon says, oh, no, I don't want that. <laughs> the whistle blew before yes. the pitch was made. That's why the ball's down at the 12-yard line. And now a third and about 13. Sikahima in motion. Big play. This is misfiring over Plater. Now Washington State is going to get the football back. Joe Taylor was defending. Washington State's Bill Gribble will be back for this expected punt from BYU's Mike Mees. Now remember, Mees had one punt block and another one almost blocked. There's Gribble back at the Washington State 40. Nine minutes, 36 seconds left to play. Brigham Young leading 38 to 28. Mees in the end zone. Zone 46. Gets it back to about the 49, but still good position for the Washington State offense. Fourth Holiday Bowl is winding down. We still have over nine minutes left. Brigham Young leading 38 to 28. And we'll return after these messages. Washington State going with Harris and LaBaum. This is LeBaum, excellent defensive play by Steve Brady, the free safety. One thing Washington State's got to be very careful, I know this is going through Coach Wallace, but he doesn't want to do anything what they call stupid and try to get too fast. He's got plenty of time, just nine minutes to go in this ball game, just move the football, doing what we've done the best, and we can catch it. Second down, seven. This is Casper now. They switch quarterbacks. He has his man there. Keller inside the 25. Jeff Keller. So this is the formula that has worked right. so well during the season, switching quarterbacks. Here's the, they, he fakes the plate at the end and intercepted on that kid. That's a very, very fine call. They short, send a man short. They send a man behind him. That same exact formation, was, the pass was intercepted. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that last time that kid threw the ball was in the center. All right. We're going to have golf for you in April. The LPGA from Hilton Head, South Carolina. Meanwhile, Ricky Turner is back at quarterback. They switch quarterbacks after one play. Here's a draw play. Down to the 15-yard line goes Tim Harris. Well, he's a tough kid. He's been hurt a couple of times tonight. Picks up eight yards. It's going to be second and two at the BYU 15-yard line. We'll keep... A close check now on the time left. Eight minutes, 25 seconds, and the clock running. 8.25 left in the game. Mitchell goes left. Jones goes left. Second down and a little more than two at the 15-yard line. Breaking tackles is Robert Williams. First down at the 11-yard line. Mike Smith, what do you got for us? Still, Jim McMahon way out front, 44,800 votes. Herschel Walker second. Surprisingly, Marcus Allen only 17,000 votes for the Heisman Trophy winner. But still about eight minutes to go. First down, Washington State, 11 and a half yard line of BYU. Less than eight minutes now to play in the game. Ricky Turner at quarterback. Down go 
about the eight yard line. Robert Williams again. And in from the sidelines with the play selection is wide receiver Jeff Keller. Keller and Escalera will be the wide receivers. Keller to the left, Escalera to the right. That last play picked up four yards, second and six at the eight yard line of Brigham Young. Williams. He's close to a first down around the three or four yard line. A little bit short of a first down, I believe, about a yard and a half shy. It's this quick flip. The reason why this play, you can't see it, is that the man come back in and block is in motion right there. It's a great play because it's the first time they've used the play in that situation. They caught the BYU team by surprise. Third down, one and a half yards away from a first down. Two tight ends. Mitchell in motion. And uh, that was Mike Morgan from Salt Lake City who jumped across the line to see whether he was drawn on. No. It's against the defense. Now another flag was just thrown. That may have been a second penalty. Well, you see what happened is that guy thought the man moved and, and the offensive lineman, once he puts his hand down, can't move it. That kid made a bad mistake and I'm not sure that there wasn't a penalty after that for maybe somebody said something they weren't supposed to. Well, I thought there was a definitely a flag you see thrown it? belatedly after the first one. Wait for referee Jack Gatto to tell us what really happened. Official attendance here tonight, 52,419. This is one of those kind of things that drive a coach crazy. I, tell, I see both coaches sit on it. You have no idea what's going to happen. Lavelle Edwards is on the 25-yard line, and Walden is on the 30. of scrimmage was between the three and four yard line. It was an offside penalty. It's half the distance and they're probably discussing if it was a first down and, a, and then if it was an unsportsmanlike conduct it's half the distance more to which would be probably about six to seven inches. The clock shows that we have six minutes and 33 seconds left to play. First downs. Right. Washington State 23, 18 of them in the second half. Brigham Young 19 first downs, but only four in the second half. But those four were mighty big first downs. Okay, there's a penalty. First down. First down. First and goal to go. The ball will be placed just inside the two. The reason for the delay, they made their measurement over along the sidelines where the chains were. First and goal to go. One and a half yards away from another Washington State touchdown. Remember, this team was down 31 to 7 at one time. Now it's 31, 38 to 28. Again, two tight ends, Beach and White. touchdown. The officials have not signaled. Mike Martin was the ball carrier. He's our leading touchdown scorer. They use him in goal line offense, short yardage situations. The quarterback will just have a straight handoff, which means everybody comes off the ball, just hand it off to him nice and smooth and let him dive. But he does not cross the plane. That means, ladies and gentlemen, if he puts any part of his body across that white line, it's a touchdown. He did not make it. It's two feet away. To the left is Jones. Is it a touchdown? Turner on the keeper. And of course, not every play here can see who we can take up 30 seconds. It's exactly. still not into the end zone. Exactly. Quarterback ran a quarterback sneak there, and it looked like he was in, but the obviously the line headline did not think. Running now, only five and a half minutes left in the game. BYU digging in defensively is leading by ten. He brought up a very interesting point. There is about ten seconds, fifteen seconds. They're going to miss later on. Not my words. All right. Still two tight ends. Touchdown, Mike Martin, the touchdown maker. That stops the clock with five. Changes to Brigham Young 38, Washington State 
34. Now, it's a, now he's just going to hand the dot. They're going to try the other side. They went to the right twice. Martin hits, makes the tackle. William hits him good, but he just got too much momentum. Now, it's an interesting you strategy. You go for two? So, without a question. You're in a bowl game. You go for two now, so that a field goal will win it later on for you. Yes, right. sir. There he goes. All right. Going for the two-point conversion. 5-12 left to play in the game. Man in motion. Turner still has it. He's in. Right, option. 38 to 36. Five minutes and 12 seconds left to play. Now let me ask you this, Lee. At this point, assuming that you have a place kicker who has pretty good control of the football, would you try to kick it short or would you try to kick it deep? No, no, you got to kick the ball deep and play field position because there's, there's a, as Al McGuire said, there's a lifetime. Very good. We'll return right. Here's that touchdown play, or that two point. Right, Here's the there, two point. Okay, now the quarterback comes down the same option play he's been running. There's no difference. He comes down the line of scrimmage. If the tailback is blocked by one guy, he comes down, he cuts it in here. Great offensive play. The defensive play was good, but not quite quick enough. And good blocking by Patrick and Sloan on the right side of that Washington State line. 38 to 36. You know, last year after that 46 to 45 <laughs> game, Lee, I said, there's, there's just no way that you can top it. Look what we have here. It's amazing. These people do a sensational job of selecting those teams. All right. Sakahima and Hansen are the two deep return men for BYU. He's got to kick the ball long. Kevin Morris. Rolling along the ground. Uh, BYU has pretty good position here. It was Tom Homo. I thought it was Homo, or was it? Pete Shaw. No, Pete Shaw, I'm sorry. Pete Shaw, a defensive back, who fielded that ball. So BYU has good position here. This is what Coach Edwards is thinking right now. He probably told that kid, go out there and play the game exactly like it was the first series of downs. If we get too conservative, they'll get good field position. They'll beat us with a field goal. They have got to move the ball down the other end of the field. All right, five minutes, eight seconds left to play in the game. Hanson and Sikahima are the running backs. He's out throwing. Going out firing. Oh, trying to hit his tight end, Gordon Hudson. And the McMahon was decked just as he released the ball. It's going to be second down and 10. And that only took five seconds. And, of course, every incomplete pass now plays into the hands of Washington State. Correct. They're playing, as you see, number three there. He is playing as the fifth defensive back the entire second half. And the strategy has worked very well because they're, they're putting their best men on the opponent's best men. Simple theory. Sikahima and Hansen are the running backs. Wide to the right is Scott Colley. Second down and 10 play for Brigham Young. Oh, couldn't get it to Kozlowski. Wide receiver from Carlsbad, California. Now, a big, big third and 10 with 4.58 left in the game as Kozlowski comes to the sidelines. Happy holidays, Cole. The basic thing that uh, McMahon is now thinking about is no turnovers, but percentages are he's going to go to his tight end again because they've been playing man for man underneath, and it's the tight end against number three for first down right here. Now the tight end, Gordon Hudson, is lined up on the right side. This is third and ten. Fourth time McMahon has been sacked. Now watch. Elisera does the same thing again he did before. He started one way and it comes around the other. He's trying to get the ball to the tight end, but Elisera makes the play. Excellent defensive coverage, but a great pass rush. Now Mike Meads will have the pressure on him, the punter for Brigham Young. And a fine, fine returner, Bill Gribble. Bill Gribble is back at the Washington State 30 with four minutes and 15 seconds left in the game and the clock running. And Brigham Young leading 38-36.
There's an interesting thing that uh, just said it was a very, very good point in coaching. The center was not satisfied. The ball was dry enough. He asked for a new ball. Very important. Now the strategy being planned offensively by Jim Walden and his staff. See those eyes? I've been there before. He's studying that scoreboard. A little problem along the line of scrimmage. Now apparently everything's ready. blocked away from the punter or we would have had another block punt but somebody from Brigham Young picked up that man coming on but because of the short punt the hurried punt Washington State has an excellent position from which to launch the offense their own 40 yard line after a 37 yard punt here it is this is an interesting change of strategy they've tried to block the punt from the man's right all of a sudden they come from his left he doesn't see him but all he rushes him it's just like a scare Took his eye off the ball. It was a bad kick. That was Bruce Hansen who picked up Great that play. Washington State player who almost blocked it. Casper is decked on a tremendous rush by three BYU players, led by, among others, Brandon Flint. Right, this is the first sack. They come back. They try to throw that pass before, but they. Then somebody deep and somebody short, and a guy just ran right over him. You talk about a big play right there. Watch number six, 99. Does not get the play, but he attracts the attention for 77, who pushes the guy right back over him. Loss of 10. Second and 20 at the Washington State 30. The clock running. Less than three and a half minutes left in the game. That's Keller wide to the right. Mitchell in motion. Williams out of the backfield was the intended receiver. Now a very big third and 20 for Washington State with 317 remaining as Robert Williams comes back to the huddle. Now BYU brings in Kyle Morrell, a freshman defender from Bountiful, Utah. He's an additional defensive back, number five. Correct. Now, they should, if, if they go back to what they've done in the past, they'll try to throw the ball somewhere to that tight end, number 89. All right. This is Turner. Uh -oh. He gets only about six yards. They switch quarterbacks there after two downs. And Ricky Turner. You talk about earning your money right now. This is where he's got to make the big decision. In my opinion, he's got to punt the football. The reason why he punts the football, well, you see Turner running up there. Can't find anybody. He's going to scramble. Now remember, the regular punter was injured early in the game, and place kicker Kevin Morris has had to take over. Turner has completed three of eight passes for 57 yards, but he has run for 96 yards. Now the reason why he's punting the ball, he wants the ball put down in their territory, so that if there is a problem and a mistake, which there could be, they got a chance to score. Sukahima, fair catch, Brigham Young, 40 yard line, three minutes and two seconds left to play. Brigham Young leading by two points, 38 to 36 in this fourth annual Holiday Bowl. Not a player is sitting down. Every player, both sidelines, looking on. Yet another. You know, it's interesting, Boy. Ray. I was in this situation once. There's no greater thrill of being involved in a great football game. It's just too bad either one of these teams have to lose. All right. Jim McMahon and company from the Brigham Young 20-yard line with 3.02 left in the game. And he's going to be firing. Screen. A screen. This is Hansen. And they come up with a pretty good gain when they need it the most. A six-yard pickup. In their offensive scheme, this is better than a, than a run. They do it just as well. They throw a little screen pass, and the guy goes up the sideline. The problem was that he went out of bounds. That played right into the Washington State's hands. Gain of six. Second and four. BYU 26. Two minutes, 55 seconds left. They will run the Polly ball. Polly to the right, Kozlowski to the right. They will run the ball twice here. There's once. This is Sikahima trying to get outside. 
He's short of a first down by about a yard. Mike Smith, what's the total say on that most valuable player vote? Mike. Can you hear me? Okay, on the most valuable player vote, the winner is Jim McMahon, BYU. He has a 7,000 vote lead over Herschel Walker, Marcus Allen, and Bob Grable out of the running. Thank you, Mike. All right, our most valuable player by vote, Jim McMahon. If I get 50 cents, can I vote? <laughs> Incidentally, I told you earlier, Jim's in the running for that Davy O'Brien Award presented by the Fort Worth Club to the nation's outstanding quarterback. He's in the running for that. Now, Washington State has one timeout remaining. BYU has three timeouts remaining. BYU has a third and one at the Brigham Young 29 and a half yard line with two minutes and 42 seconds remaining, trying to protect a two point lead. For BYU, Stroth and Close and Oates and Eldridge and Rogers have been the, the interior linemen. For Washington State, Flager. McKay started, Lynch replaced him at left guard. Sebahar, Patrick, and Sloan, they've been the, the men who've been slugging it out up front offensively for the two teams. A very big third and less than a yard for a first down just beyond the Brigham Young 29-yard line. The fullback is Hamilton. break and great alertness by McMahon. That could have been right there the opportunity that Washington State needed and wanted. Instead, McMahon turns it into a plus for BYU. He drops the center snap. The ball comes loose. He picks it up. He's got enough sense not to put his knee down and he scrambles for a first down. For Washington State, that was Mike Walker, their great defensive tackle, who reached out and couldn't quite get his hands to the football. First down, BYU. Could have been delay of game. No, it was a right oh, tackle move, his right hand. Oh, uh, the offensive right tackle yes, made sir. a move? And I'll tell you what, this is what the coach goes crazy about. Don't make any penalties with two minutes to go because the clock stops. If you don't do nothing but just stand there, the clock will run out. What it does, it, it means that Washington State can still use exactly. its one time out. Exactly, good point. All right, first and 15 now at the BYU 29 after that penalty with two minutes and 17 seconds remaining. and 15 and we're ready to go the Washington State this is Hamilton big run saved a touchdown, the defending back on the run by Wayman Hamilton. Right, the quarterback goes back to pass and hands the ball off to the guy, and it's just run where they're not. And he does a great job of using his speed, keeps his balance, goes down the sideline, does a smart thing by not going out of bounds so the clock doesn't have to stop. Great play there, but that is a very, very big play. The clock continues to run. 140 left. First down at the Washington State 41-yard line. This is Sikahima for no game. He ran into big number 95, I do believe, or 96, Lee Blakeney. Here's the problem we have right now. They have no more timeouts left. They can just take the ball, ball back, and take the quarterback on his knee and run the clock out. Most valuable player defensively, middle linebacker Kyle Whittingham. Most valuable offensive player, Jim McMahon. And there is Jim McMahon. Holder of 56 NC2A passing records, and he hasn't done anything tonight to take away from his glitter. Would you believe that the guy has 56 passing records and the biggest play of the game he's made? He picked up the fumble center snap. What are his statistics? 27 out of 43, 342 yards and three touchdowns. That's most guys' career. 
Yeah, that was my career. Had, had an I interception? Played. I don't think he's had an interception. I don't think so. I'd like to see if somebody could get it to me. What his statistics were after the first eight passes? You know, the difference in this game right now, from being 38-36 in a tie, was that one two-point conversion that misfired, or else we'd have a 38-38 football game. How about the passive interception yeah. coming out of the box? All right, second down and 12, 42-yard line of Washington State. One minute, 25 seconds left. Washington State trailing by two, has no timeouts remaining. This is Sikahima. He went out of bounds. 31-yard line. Mike Walker ran him out of bounds, close to a first down. Here it is again. Great play, a sweet play. It's a sure handoff. He just runs out around the end, gets a good block, crushes the cornerback, cuts back in, and makes it. He just steps out of bounds to stop the clock right there. That was Calvin. Right there, by his toe. Boy, well, that was Calvin Close who threw that great block. Mike Smith, you have a presentation for us along the sidelines? Yes, indeed we do. I think you kind of let the cat out of the bag as to the uh, best offensive and defensive players. The best defensive player, Debbie Fache, is from Brigham Young University and is... Kyle Whittingham. Kind of a tough vote. There were some outstanding performers on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, certainly was an exciting game. Didn't start out to be, but it looks like it is now. And Eric Sutter, the best offensive player award goes to... Offensive player award goes to who? Jim, Jim McMahon of BYU. There's a lot of noise, a lot of confusion. So, Ray, we'll take it right back up to you. Okay. Thanks very much, Mike. Ray, this is interesting right here. The quarterback can now take the knee and take the ball game. But remember, remember the time in the in the uh, in the ball game where I think the Giants lost the ball game on a bad snap. A guy caught the ball went all the way. Yeah. It's not ever over as long as he catches the ball. Takes one knee back, the game is over. All right, Dave Ina, an additional tight end is in the game. As always in a telecast like this, a lot of people help us out, and we are really indebted to Bob Sexton and Mike Sexton, Bill Edwards and Gene Gregston. Gentlemen, you've kept our heads above water, and we thank you for your help. It's been, been just great. Continues to run. You know, it's a shame. I, I've seen the Washington squad over there, and uh, it's a shame in a ball game like this that either one of the teams have to lose. But there's no loser in a game like this, Ray. There's absolutely no loser. Man. This ball's a football. The shows 34 seconds. And the Brigham Young Rooters ecstatic over their team's second consecutive victory in the Holiday Bowl. Last year, that thrilling 46-45. Tonight, 38 to 36, the Brigham Young Band is gathering along the near sidelines. The final seconds are ticking away. Washington State unable to do anything about it. They have used all of their timeouts in a valiant effort. It looks like I'm going to have to bring Indiana back here. <laughs> okay, We're the last seconds. team to beat them. The roar of the cannon, the roar of the crowd. And Jack Murphy Stadium in San tells us that this game is history with Bell Edwards and Jim Walden embracing out of the center of the field. Their two teams have played so very hard in a holiday bowl that I'm sure will be long remembered by all here in person and hopefully by those of you who watch it along television. We'll be right back.